can we not talk about family when family's all that we got? Everything I went through, you were standing there by my side. And now you're gonna be with me for the last one. Hello and welcome to Too Fast and Too Forever. There's all kinds of family, but we chose this one. This is episode 23, The Fast and the Furious Lap 3. I'm Joey Lewandowski. I'm Joe Two, and this episode is brought to you by Starkiss Tuna, because somebody does like the tuna. Oh. Starkiss right. Company is a food company that is focused on healthy, shelf-stable seafood products in the United States. If you do like the tuna, like Starkist. Do you remember years ago when Jessica Simpson made headlines by thinking that yes. the chicken of the sea was chicken? not tuna. Well, here we are, lap three. We have been teasing it. We had the tune-up. Last week, we had our bonus episode, You Are My Lifespan, Chapter One. I hope you guys liked that, because I liked it. I um, just got to listen to it today, and it was hilarious to me, so. I hope you like it, too. Email family at cageclub.me. Let us know what you think about it. But we are here today. You're going to be soon joined by the Mikester, Lou resident story Mike Manzi. So we got, we got Two, Lou, and Mikester, right? I think that's where... I mean, I'm not going to remember to call you two, but... Yeah, exactly. Not that I ever really refer to you by name, but... Two and two, Lou. Lou and, and Mikester. Mikester. Yeah. Yeah. So, we're talking The Fast and the Furious 2001, the first movie in the series. Back to it. I know I watched it in 4K. I think Mike watched it in 4K, too. Uh, you know, I gotta say, we might bring it up again, but Brian's eyes at the end, that final sequence there, is so blue. Maybe in a little bit, maybe too. more in, in 4K, but, you know, it, it, they were popping. In the first scene, like, when he's, like, at the, at Tretto's, uh, diner, garage, yep. diner, yeah. cafe, Marketing Tretto cafe. cafe. Yeah, when he's there, his eyes are, like, super blue, too. I always yeah. wonder if it's like some kind of camera trick or something, but who knows. Before we get into the movie, there's a couple things we have to do as we do every episode. First up, extracurricular activities. Oh, cool, yeah. I have one. Okay. I always forget about think, this. Yeah, I think mostly because because I'm going away for work. We recorded the last one just a week ago instead of two weeks ago. So we haven't had a lot of time to have things happen in between. But in between the last episode and this episode, we had a New Year's celebration. We did. We watched separately the CNN New Year's countdown. I know that Wes, shout out Wes, was tweeting at us. Uh, Wes and his I wife watched that it was the CNN everything countdown. that I hyped it to be. Anderson Cooper ripping shots of tequila and making weird faces was like top tier. As you guys know, I think that the CNN broadcast is the best because it's fucking zany as shit. Um, it just goes off the rails real quick. It's my favorite. So hope it, hope if you did watch it, I hope you enjoyed it. Let us know if you did or not. Family at cageclub.me. Let us know how you rang in the New Year's, hopefully with AC2. But Joe, I know that you went, you had a much more uh, uh, noteworthy New Year's than I did. I went to a friend's house and moved back from Virginia. Uh, me cool, and a handful though. of friends went over there, had a lot of good food, a lot of good beer. I put my foot down and said, we're watching CNN. Uh, by the end of the night, everybody was on board with it. Good. Came home, you know, woke up, watched the movies. But I know you had a much more noticeable, noteworthy uh, thing, which I think you might have alluded to. I don't remember. But where, I don't did, remember you, either. where did you ring in the new year from? Because I game Airline Miles. I got a hotel room in Times Square looking uh-huh. down into the crowd. So, Rich, when I went down into the city, it's a clusterfuck and a half, as I'm sure you can imagine. But, like, even to just, like, get to, like, our hotel, because, like, we, you know, she, like, did some work in the morning, so we left, and, like, we arrived there around, like, three or four, and the cops already had, like, all the streets shut down, and we had to keep being, like, no, like, we're staying at a hotel, like, there, like, we have to get through here, and they, like, you know, they were pretty cool about it, but it was just, like, very bizarre, very packed, it was wet, I don't know how anybody stood outside but like by the time we got there there was already people like to the point of our window like i mean like standing there waiting and i was just like this is like my worst nightmare can you imagine like being outside for seven hours in the rain like with nothing to drink nowhere to go like packed dick tight like yeah so we had a good view from our window i so I, I sent you a picture. It's a pretty good view. Yeah. And um, I could see the stage, so, like, we didn't watch the ABC broadcast, but we would change to it and be like, who is that? And then we'd, like, look down, you know, fr- from the window, and we'd be like, oh, look, it's Christina Aguilera in the white dress. She's right there. And, like, you know, you could see, like, where everybody was, so that was cool. Yeah, that's very cool. Very cool. Yeah, I had a fun time. It was cool. Uh, how, like, was could you hear it through your window? Yes. Was it loud as fuck? Um. Or was it, was it, was it much louder than, like, a normal New York hotel experience? A little bit, but it was just, like, kind of white noise-ish. Like, yeah. it was, like, a lot of, like, mer- 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 like, you couldn't really, like, hear anything, right, like, right, right. specific. I could definitely hear the, like, beat to, like, the drums and, like, the music and stuff, but we were 20 floors up and, like, back some, so. Gotcha. Okay. Well, that's cool. You could see it, like, I mean, you know, we weren't, like, super close or anything, but, like, you could see it, so. 
yeah, it wasn't. I don't think, and it cleared out pretty quick too. And because like we were staying up drinking, so like by like three, I looked down and I was like, oh my god, there's still all these people here. But it was just a bunch of trash everywhere. It's not that not people at all. So <laughs> I've never stayed at Times Square because Times Square is kind of the not even kind of it's it's the worst part of New York. City oh yeah, in terms absolutely of like for sure. Culture in terms of anything, so. Uh, there's no real reason to stay there unless you're there for an event like that, but happy that it worked out for you. Do you ever want to do it again, or or is one enough? If I could do it again like that next year, I, I don't think I'd be opposed to it. I'm not, I'm not like, oh, I, like, this is, I must go back and do this every right. year. That was, like, the top way that I would do it, though, like, because I had, like, this wristband, so, like, we went to dinner, we came back, and I was just like, I'm good, and, like, the cops like, oh, yeah, there's your wristband, and, like, you know, you feel kind of VIP because you're, like, staying in the middle. Yeah, so it wasn't terrible. I wouldn't, I'm not boner to do it again like cool i did it once yeah you're one better than i am in terms of that work in that regard yeah when i go to new york city like i specifically walk around times square <laughs> like yeah. i won't even go i won't even like cross through it if even if it's the fastest way to get somewhere because i'm like i don't want to deal with these people at all so anything else happened to you since we recorded i think uh, a little over a week ago we just recorded one week and one day ago no no i think that was about it that was my my major my major thing that happened to me so far. Very cool. Well, then let's move on to the mailbag portion. Before we get to the mailbag, uh, shout out. We have a, a Patreon page, patreon.com slash too fast to forever. You can get some sweet merch over there. Support us. Lots of cool things. We can do bonus content on Patreon. Shout out to Cassie Wilson, our patron over there, supporting us, getting a verbal shout out on the episode. So mailbag, Joe, we have quite a full mailbag. I was telling you this. We do, we do, we do, I think. So usually, so, okay, so how I know that we have a lot of mail is because Joey will, will message me and be like, what time do you want to start recording? And I'll be like, oh, you know, whenever time. And then he'll be like, we should probably start a little bit before that. Well, yeah, because we started, since we flipped the script and do this part first yeah. before the guest joins us. We kind of have to uh, time we, it. Again, behind the scenes, movie magic, if you will. We use, we normally record like nine o'clock, so we usually have the guest show up at nine. So then Joe and I are like, okay, like I, I look at the mailbag, I'm like, there's only a couple, we can do it probably in a half an hour. Let's get on at 8.30, let the people know at nine. Or like, yeah. maybe it's an 8.15, whatever. Yeah. So then I was like, we might need a little bit more time, because Joe, we got five emails tonight. Oh. Okay. First email, uh, subject line, car pick, don't say it's from me yet. So uh, from a mystery sender, someone who has not emailed us before, Ooh. I don't want to say who it is. Um, not a celebrity, more of a friend than a celebrity, but okay. Somebody who we're going to come back to this later. There is, there's nothing in here to talk about now. It's just a car pick, which we'll play with, uh, with Mike later. But I just want to say, number one, I got you. We'll come back to you later. All right. Okay. Cool. Okay. Number two. New email. This is from a new listener. This is someone who messaged us on Facebook. So if you go to facebook.com slash too fast too forever, I think I have a, an email button. Like you can add a button to a page and click yeah. click a button and sends an email. So we got an email from uh, Joshua Luther to our Facebook page, Too Fast Too Forever. Okay. Joshua says, I've been listening to your podcast for a couple of weeks and have almost caught up to lap two. But before I started listening, I'd never seen Tokyo Drift or Fast Five. Ooh. Over the past week, I watched both, and holy crap, I can't believe how good they both were. <laughs> good, good, I good. I remember when Tokyo Drift came out and a feeling like a movie removed from the Fastiverse. But being it a car guy, is. it definitely ranks in my top three, and Fast Five ranks number two behind the original for me as a favorite of the franchise. Well, Fast Five is fucking awesome. I mean, like, yeah. Five and Six are just, like, so much fun. So, yeah, makes sense. They really are. Glad we convinced you to watch two I know. Of them. I wrote back to him. I was like, you know, thanks for writing in. Um, I'm so glad that you were able to watch these because of, you know... Not because of us, but because of us, you know what I mean? Yeah, so, yeah, exactly. You know, Joshua, if you want to write in again after you catch up, after you hear this, we'd love to hear your rankings, your, your eight Add in you to order. The, the averages. Yeah. Yeah. Which I don't know if I've been updating. I need to get back and sort of fix that up, but okay. you know, I will. We'll, we'll get there. But okay. shout out Joshua. Thank you for writing in Facebook.com slash too fast too forever. Got a bunch of people liking that page over there. Lots of you know, goofy memes and stuff. So go check it out now. Joe, this one I was you know no offense to Joshua. No offense. No offense to the other people who've written in. But this one is the most the one I'm most excited about today. Joe, we got an email from Cassie Wilson from our Patreon. Supporter. Oh, nice. Well, hello, She Cassie. writes in, subject line, F and F, obsessed, obviously. Okay. Hi, guys. So first off, I really hope you all get this before doing FF1 for lap three. And I wrote her back. I said, don't worry. We're good. You got it in just in time. We're all good. Just here. in time. She says, I've been trying to catch up for a hot second now and I finally made it. I've been fast and furious, obsessed, obviously, and also love a good podcast. 
I really appreciate you all for the consistency and professionalism you have for this franchise. That's I guess I'll share my FNF Joey's. background. Thank Joey for that. <laughs> <laughs> I do nothing. So, thank you. So I did not grow up with these movies. Actually, a bootleg copy of Tokyo Drift sat in my house since it came out, and I'd never had any interest in it at all. Okay. I was not a car girl, probably because my dad wasn't, and actually actively avoided all things this franchise up until January 2018. So we're you're fresh. This is like a year. You're yep. like only a year into it. Mm-hmm. Oh. Mm-hmm. oh, man. I love a good ship. It's how I get into really any movie or TV show. So yeah. I, like everyone else, constantly saw this picture on Facebook. So I'm going to put this picture in the little Joe I want to see it. Thing. What is it? It's something that I had seen, but not a lot of. But it actually... Cassie, I don't Where's know if you know this about us. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I posted this on our page, I think. Oh, did you? Okay. Yeah. This actually touches two things that we do. We have we obviously have a Boyfriend Material podcast about Ryan Gosling movies. Which we've mentioned, So the picture, sure. it says, most people want this, and it's Gosling and McAdams, Rachel McAdams, in the boat from The Notebook. Yes. And at the bottom, it says, but I want this. And it's Letty just smiling at Dom in his mechanics outfit outside of 1327. And so she said she saw this. You can only see this enough times before you're like, uh, who the hell are these people? And why do so many people want their relationship? So I took to YouTube, watched a couple of Dom and Letty compilation videos with absolutely no context, and I was interested. Okay. The first movie was on HBO, so I threw it on, and all it took was Vin Diesel grabbing Michelle Rodriguez and saying, and you're my trophy to be hooked. Yeah. Which I caught that line for this for the first time, I think, in this one. Yeah. I, I quickly got my hands on all eight films and binged them, skipping two and three because no Vin equals no Cassie. Oh, but... That's all it took, and I was obsessed with everything Fast and Furious, especially Dom and Letty. I have clocked everything significant to that relationship and have complete timelines and theses on everything to do with that relationship. So if you ever want to do a shipper lap, I'm your girl. Well, we have to say for sure we'll have Cassie on for our uh, minute by minute breakdown because there's some there's some good Dom and Letty, uh, Dom and Letty mi- minutes in this movie. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Anyway, so when I was done with movies and fan fiction, God, I hope you were, I hope that you were excited about what just came out. Then when I wrote back to her, I said, "You're not going to believe it, but the perfect timing. We got a special thing that you're, I hope, really going to like." on January 8th, so I hope that she liked that. So she says... I I hope she did, too. Anyway, so when I was done with movies and fan fiction, yes, I know, LOL, but I've been into it since I was a preteen, I turned to podcasts. I'm almost... I've almost heard them all, and y'all are probably the most well-produced I've come across. Well, that's... Thank you so much. You're... Thank Joey. Exactly. (laughs) Yeah. So thanks for that. She says, also helps that you're not super misogynistic, which is... You know, good. That's, we also got, yeah. a, got a little woke from Iceland. And I also, not that you ever go off tangent too much, but I also have the edit button so I can just, you know, snip, snip. And I, but just, I don't think know. that, like, I generally don't think we're, like, the most bro no, down kind so of dudes in the world anyways, so. Okay. Now yeah. she gives her rankings. Okay. So she writes them from one to eight, so it might not make sense, but I'm going to read up from eight to one, if that makes sense, okay? Yeah, yeah. We always read down. We read down up to the top. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Number eight, too fast, too furious, not a fan. It's a common All capital hater. letters, N-O-T, not a fan, only seen twice, one of the only movies I've ever almost turned off in the middle. Wow. I don't find Tyrese funny at all, and Brian seems like he had a brain transplant from the first movie. <laughs> well, he's an FBI agent, then. That's why maybe he's a robot. Number seven, Fate of the Furious. Second best opening goes off a cliff after that. I really like the ending action scene and not much else. You know, right if there. You don't, if, it doesn't, if it doesn't tug on your heartstrings about, like, Brian actually dying, like Paul no, eight, Walker. Eight, 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 oh, eight, eight, not seven. Sorry. I thought you said, oh, you said number seven is Fate. Number seven sorry. is Fate of the Furious. Okay, sorry, 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 sorry. Number six, Fast and Furious. Number four, love this opening the most of any film. After that, this movie depresses me. Look forward to elaborating when y'all get back to this one. I have thoughts. Is that the, that's the iguana one, right? It is the iguana one, and yes. it's also the one where Letty dies, quote unquote dies. So dies. obviously, if, if she's Spoiler. here, if she's here for Vin and Letty, or for Dom and Letty, yeah. of course she's not going to like that. That broke up the uh, the relationship. Number five, Fast Five. Love this plot, but not a fan of no Letty. Wish they didn't kill her. Yes. Number four, Tokyo Drift. I like this plot. I wish they weren't in high school. Probably because Lucas Black looks 35. Han <laughs> is everything. He does. Lucas Black looks so old, and we've talked about that on, like, the last lap. He's definitely not anywhere near high school age in that movie. You know, I was thinking, so we were talking when we were when we started reading You Are My Lifespan, when it takes yes. place, right? The yes. episode, or the first movie. Yes. Though, in the description, they mention the Shaw Brothers, so this goes probably through the franchise. So, I'm no spoilers, but You Are My Lifespan starts out with just chapters that are just titled Chapter 1. And then around, like, 30, it gets chapters with names. 
Okay. And I, I don't want to... Sp- can you beep it? Can we do the beep function here? We could do beeping. Yeah, sure. Okay, so like one of the later chapters is called like because she spelled wrong. Oh no. Okay. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, so I know that there's later characters in the movie. Because I was thinking, I hope in this story Han shows up and like if if Han's not like if we finish this entire run of You Are My Lifespan and Han is not satisfactory, I want you to find the next one a Han and Giselle fanfic. Okay. Okay. Fair. That's that's, that's my, that's ten my years. Uh, next goal. Ten years. Ten years, yes. Okay. Number three. Oh, she says, okay. So the top three, she says, are firm, and then she says the rest besides the bottom two could be in any order. So in terms of Tokyo Drift, Fast Five, Fast and Furious, so three, five, and four, three, four, five, those can be in any order. Okay. Top three. These are the ones that she has with a bullet. Number three, Fast and Furious 6. I six love the dramatics of this one. Letty coming back, obviously, the ridiculous Superman highway jump. Which, I mean, again, if you're into Dom and Letty, that is, like, one of the moments, it's, it's right? It's the pinnacle moment. Like, that's, like, poster-worthy. Like, that needs yeah. to be in your room or something. Like, yeah. I tried to do that, I think. I don't think I got it, but I tried to do that as the art for the first episode, and it just, it, it's so quick. It happens really so fast. Yeah. Yeah. She says, the villain a lot. I also love Giselle a lot, too. So, yeah, there same. we go. We all love Giselle. We do. R.I.P. Giselle. Number two, Furious 7. I love the look of this movie. Love Abu Dhabi. Love the ending. Honestly, the look of this one is what bumps it for me. It does. It has it has like a nice like um like uh, not like a neon hue, but like the desert hue that they use in a lot of these movies. Now that you say that, like a lot of these movies that take place in like the desert have like a certain coloring to them. Like everything's like a little white, a little brown, a little blue. Like yeah. And the number one, I don't know if you've been doing the mental math. It's one. The Fast and the Furious, the first movie. Absolutely. She says, "I'm so into the 2001 aesthetic. Like nothing makes me angrier." And the fact that I wasn't 17 in 2001 instead of 8 to experience this time in clothes and music and car racing lifestyle that swept the country. So eight also, in I 2001? fucking love Letty. Yeah, she's she might be our youngest how old, fan. How old were we in 2001? I, w- I, I was I turned 14 at the end of 2001. So I must have been like 12. Well, you're yeah. Okay. No, no, you're you're younger than me. Okay. Yeah, because I I'll be 30 this year. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I was 13. So we were like yes. we were like the peak age of this movie. I think we were a little bit like if we could if if I could drive while doing like I feel like like the drive. I think what she's saying like in terms of being 17. I think like that's... we were like driving to the movie theater. Yeah, and you saw this like driven there. Yeah, yep. I get it. Also, I fucking love Letty, and she is a grungy ass queen in this movie. Also, she fun is. thing to notice is how much Dom tells people what to do all throughout the series, and in Always. this movie in particular. He doesn't take direction or shit from anyone except Letty. Yeah. For example, the first scene, scene. where first Mia scene. is trying to get him to break up the Vince and Brian fight totally does not Mia. move until Letty tells him to. Exactly. Something about an alpha who is completely at the will of his girl. Also, love the role that of Letty was to be in a triangle with Dom and Brian and Michelle was like, no, I'm not doing that. A Latina girl with an alpha boyfriend would not cheat on him. Yeah. I, is there ever like a hint that like Brian likes Letty? I don't know. We don't know the trivia. I actually didn't look at the trivia. So I don't, I don't know. That, we're going to we're gonna sprinkle in some trivia this time around. So we might, you know, that might be something. I don't know. Because I feel like he's always from the jump. Uh, into Mia. He's always into Mia, and and she's firmly Dom's girl. Like, yeah, firmly. So, yeah, maybe there's some trivia we don't know. Also, her refusing to do it to the point of almost quitting forced them to write Letty differently. Oh, so I guess this is trivia. Okay. Okay. She said 23-year-old Michelle Rodriguez did that. She says, I'm most passionate about this movie, and it's perfect to me. So, Well, glad. Hopefully you're listening to this lap, and we are going to talk about it again. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Uh, we're going to talk about it again. We're talking about it with the Mikester when he joins us in a little bit. The we Mikester. also have, I'm looking now on IMDb, there are 47 bits of trivia, so I'm going to go through those. Damn. We'll especially look for... Uh, for Dom and Letty trivia, yes, which same. I'm sure Cassie knows already, but you know, just to make we've sure been saving it. Yes, you got, as you know, if you listen, she says, "Sorry, I wrote so much, but I've been listening, trying to catch up, and have tons of thoughts. If you ever need some different insight, P.S. If you all don't know, the first three movies are on U.S. Netflix. Wrote this while e- wrote this email while watching the first one, Fast and Furious One. Oh, they're on so Netflix right now. They were added, and we're gonna get to that in a little bit. Okay, in a, in a, in a future email, which I will get to in a little bit. Okay, so. go ahead. Thank you, Cassie. That was a Thank great email. Cassie. Obviously, you hear it. We read them all. It doesn't. The length doesn't bother us. So 
continue on. Send us your thoughts. We'll read them and talk about them. I got so happy. Like, I was just saying, like, you know, when... Because when... Well, first of all, when Cassie supported our Patreon, That's like, dope. immediately. Like, we put it up yeah. and she supported us and that was great. And then when she emailed, I was just like, oh, like, there's... It's cool to put thoughts to a name, if that makes sense. Yeah, so. exactly. You hear it. We talk to, like, about all the people that email us and... Yeah. I want to hear what you guys are up to, so cool. Next email, Ride or Die for Lap 3 from... Wes Hampton. Shout out, Wes. He says, what up, fam? Wes. I'm excited for the start of lap three. I hope you're not getting burnt out yet because you've still got not infinity more laps to go. This ain't no 10 second race. <laughs> not even close. I'm not, I'm really not close to burnout yet. Are you? No. No, not even close. Like, I'm not, I, th- I think it'll take me a solid, like, 12 or 15 to be like, huh, like, you know what I mean? Like, to even begin to get burnt out. So but four like, years, maybe? Four or five we were, years? Because we were just watching these on Christmas. Like, I've still, I haven't even gotten to the point yet where, like, I don't watch them when they're, when they're on TV. So, like, that's how I know I'm not even close to yeah. burnout yet. Yep. You know what I mean? So, that, yep. okay. It says, excellent wrap-up episode. Normally, I jot down little notes of what to write in about while I listen, but I didn't do that this time, so let's see how good my memory is. He says, thanks. I, oh, also, for the record, I did not read this email because he just sent it today, and today was a very busy day at work, so I'm oh, reading cool. this for the first time. Okay. So, normally, I sort of not screen the emails, but I read them before. Yeah. But I, I did not read this one yet, so we're, okay, we're reading ahead. it together. Okay. Thanks for the shout out for my home sweet home cross stitch. I was super was thrilled awesome. to design it, and I'm glad it came out as well as it did. It's hanging in the entryway of our house. To answer your question, I'm not sure if 19 and a half hours is average for something that size, but I feel like I'm probably a pretty slow cross stitcher just based on what I see other people do, and I can definitely listen to things while I do it. I work on them mostly while I'm on breaks at work, and a lot of the time I watch Netflix while I'm doing it. Oh, cool. As long as it's not something I need to actually watch, I can listen just fine, which I think is sort of what we, what we guessed. Yeah, I thought so. That, that's yep. what it, that makes sense to me. It doesn't require a lot of constant concentration, and I stick to mainly watching things I've already seen or things I don't care if I miss little details. Yeah. No knees, Denise. So I love that, you know, he says here, the you know, the next thing he says is not to keep coming back to this over and over, but I love that we're going to talk about no knees, Denise forever, really. We she's are. Like, she's, she's, she's coming the, she's, back. She's, we also, okay, so, okay. We gotta do your my lifespan, and then a Hannah Giselle, and then we gotta do a, a no knees to knees fanfic. It's like Rule Thirty Four, man. I it's bet gotta it exist. Out. It's it got, if you can imagine it, it's on the internet. That's yeah. Not to keep coming back to this over and over, but I forgot to include this in my last email, and Jenny reminded me. Okay. I thought more about it, and I could be wrong, but I actually think it means the opposite of what Jenny said. I think the no knees part doesn't mean she has no knees, but that they don't work, so she can't straighten her legs, so she's always on her knees. Oh, all right. Ooh, what? That's what? why when Brian says she's the only thing he's ever seen Roman take down, it was meant as a dig, because Roman could only get the girl who got with everyone. It's a little cringy, but thinking back about guys in my high school, this is definitely the kind of joke that most of them would make. Yes. So. That's, this is where we kind of, like, stopped before Jenny put the spin on it. So he's th- so I think he, yeah, wow, I don't know. I, I thought that they were implying that she, she was very promiscuous and that he was, like, with a very promiscuous girl because that's the only kind of girl that he could get. And then Jenny flipped it, and we were like, well, maybe, you know? Yeah, I still don't know. We I don't gotta, know. We gotta find out. You know, we're, we're we gotta keep, call we're Tyrese and ask him. Mm-hmm. Family movie night with my wife's family didn't go quite as planned. We were a little strapped for time, and only her sister was staying with us, so we rarely had everyone together for more than a few hours at the house. Okay. We did watch Furious 7 with her sister because she still hadn't seen it since her last visit, and we watched Fast Five with her brother and his wife, were the biggest movie critics in her family. And? They enjoyed it well enough, but I don't think we convinced them to continue watching the series. Which, oh, honestly, if they don't like Fast Five, they Probably don't deserve not. these movies. <laughs> no, I just like if yeah, if you watch Fast Five and you were like, man, I'd be like, who? I don't want to show you the rest of them either. <laughs> like, although, like in the other way, like in terms of the internet meme, like if you don't love me at my Fate of the Furious, you don't deserve me at my <laughs> Fast and Furious Six. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's so true. <laughs> Can we make that meme? I gotta post that tomorrow. Can you please? Yeah, can you? Pl- I was just gonna say, can you please make that meme so that we can post it? Just a picture of Cipher and then a picture of like Han and Giselle hugging or something. Yeah, oh, that's a really good one. I like it. Hold on. If you don't love me <laughs> at my feet, you don't deserve me at my F and F six. Yeah. Speaking of Furious Seven, when we watched it with my sister in law, we had to pause it during the car parachute scene because she didn't think parachutes worked on anything bigger than a person. No, they do. If they're big Which, enough and strong enough. I also like that she's like that's what she questions about this movie. But I <laughs> yeah, I, that's a very good point. Like the suspension of belief stops at parachute. So she saw Fast Five, where they had two <laughs> Dodge Chargers like carry 
uh, hundreds, if not thousands, thousands of pounds safe <laughs> through the streets of Brazil with precise precision. You know, specific Just skating, precision. Like it's on ice. <laughs> but a big parachute. No, 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 no. <laughs> okay. We could not convince her that. So, and while the scene is pretty exaggerated, vehicles and supplies are dropped from planes all the time. Lucky for us, my brother's in the Air Force, and that is literally his job. So we FaceTimed him and had to had him explain how airdropping vehicles work. He even sent us some videos he took from inside the plane during wow. airdrops. Even then, it took some convincing. Let's just say physics is not her strong suit. <laughs> Which, uh, poor girl. First of all, don't analyze these movies for realism. Like, Second yeah, of all... You have to just, put a little bit in the in the bag to be like, mm, it could happen. <laughs> since you are done with the old character quiz, well, we're going to do one more. Just tonight. We're, we're yeah. going to do... We're going to have the Mikester do night this one. And then next episode, we're going to... Uh, have him do the new one, which we're still we're, we're working out the kinks. Uh, I should have confirmed that, yes, I did get Letty when I took it, though I don't think I'm nearly cool enough to be here. I figure I'm a Tej at best, Ooh. but maybe your quiz will be more accurate. Well, I hope so. I hope so, too. We're gonna, we, we gotta play test it a lot. So. If nothing else, it's going to be way more comprehensive, maybe to its detriment. Who knows? <laughs> yeah. yeah, there's gonna be a lot of people that'll probably take the quiz and be like, I don't know what the fuck any of these answers are. But yeah. hopefully not. We I like to dumb it down a lot. I'm I'm good between the two of us. We usually, like I said, we were designing wacky fun time games. So like we we do pretty well together like this. I knew we tweeted back and forth a little bit, but watching CNN's New Year's Eve coverage was the best decision I made in 2018. <laughs> we had a couple of friends over. We flipped through the network coverage a little bit, but it was so boring. So I was like, hey. I hear the CNN coverage is pretty good, and they were all skeptical, but we switched over, and almost immediately, everyone was hooked. All night, our friends kept talking about how much they loved it, so thanks for the suggestion, and anyone who didn't watch it this year, remember for next year. I hyped it, and I know that I hyped it, but it's so fucking good, and, like, every year, it's wackier and wackier, dude. Like, it's so random, and, like, I'm, gl- I'm glad that you enjoyed it as much as I do, and I'm glad that it didn't disappoint you, like... Anderson Cooper taking the shots of tequila and making those weird faces was so per. And it started out, I turned it on, and at 9 o'clock, what's her name, Katie, was ripping champagne bongs out of a snorkel yeah. at 9 o'clock. And I was like, this is, I was like, Rachel, there's so much potential here. Like, like this can only get worse. Yeah. <laughs> and it did. And it did. So she kidnapped the dog. My mom was texting me about it. She was like, did you watch this shit last night? I was like, yeah. And my, like, oh, actually, that was what I wanted to say. I called my, like, mom and dad, like, the day after, like, recently. And my dad was like, did you watch the fucking CNN coverage? And I was like, yeah. And he's like, what the fuck happened there? (laughs) And I was like, I don't know, dude. He was like, he was like, those guys. He's like, the one guy drinking tequila. He didn't know who Anderson Cooper was, by the way. And he's like, that one guy just drinking tequila on air all the time. I was like, yeah, I know. He was he was really enjoying it. It's so so like, good. Apparently, I turned my parents onto it too. I don't even think I preached it to them, but like somehow they found wound up watching it and they were very happy. My mom was like all excited about the dog getting kidnapped for a while by Katie too. So I'm trying to find on oh I forgot I'm looking at the wrong Facebook. We posted on our Facebook page, facebookcom fast 2 forever about the New Year's Eve coverage. I remember I was I was basically talking I think with your mom maybe via Facebook about. Really? V- Hold on, I, I gotta figure that out. Maybe hold on. Oh, maybe that's why she watched it. I was drunk, so I mean, like, I I, I could totally have missed it. Yes, she did. So <laughs> we we posted on there about friendly reminder. There's no better programming tonight than CNN at New Year's Eve. Trust us, you're welcome. So I put a picture of it was Randy K who did the uh, the bong the the snorkel rip of champagne, right? And Randy K had yes, her Randy dog. K. That's her name. Sorry. Yeah. And I just wrote I just took a picture of that and I wrote in all capital letters Versace 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 because the dog was named Versace. And your mom responded, said, this lady with that dog and champagne shot, a monkey emoji closing his eyes, a crying <laughs> laughing emoji. So she was about it. And she apparently was watching it before you even posted, so good on her. And then I also wrote, Brooke Baldwin slowly flossing on national TV in front of a mirror man <laughs> is what New Year's Eve is all about. Like, it just, it still feels like a fever dream, you know what I mean? Like, just, <laughs> I can't believe Oh, I that know. Happened. I know. I know. I don't get it. I don't know how it works. I, I, I love that they called Andy Cohen's parents again. Apparently, they're just like guests on New Year's Eve on CNN now. Like, and like they just can't special hear correspondence. shit. Yeah. They can't hear shit. And they're like, their Skype is always fucked up. And they're like, not looking at it. And they're like, in this, they're like, his mom's still doing other shit. She's like, you know what I mean? Like, she's like talking to him. Like, it's like a weekend call. She's like doing, like, rummaging through shit. 
God, yeah. I love it. Yeah. I love it. It makes me so happy. I wish I wish CNN had like a like I wish there was like a CNN two that was just like Anderson Cooper doing that all day. There's an alternate reality, like as a, a parallel universe, <laughs> where that's where like one night a year Anderson Cooper is like straight laced and buttoned up, and the other 364 <laughs> nights a year he's just like this drunk, let, letting his uh, his gay pride show freely. You know, just yeah, man, it's so good. Okay. <laughs> I know, I love it. I really love it. Uh, Wes writes, he he puts a car picture in. Um, okay. He says, uh, sorry, last episode was being so tricky, but I don't know that this one will be any easier to answer no, your question. Okay. No, I had not heard of Jensen either. I was watching Fast and Furious 6 and looked up Letty's car because I thought it looked cool. So that answers that question. Cool. We'll get okay. to this later. He says, that's it for this week. I look forward to getting to know Mike this lap and all the new insights I'm sure you'll have to share. Until next time, Mike is cool. stay furious. We will. And Mike is cool. You'll like him. If you like us at all, you'll probably like Mike. Then, our last email, Wes also wrote in and said, One thing I forgot to mention, he says, I don't know if my Netflix account was just messed up or what the deal is, but I know for a fact that I searched for Fast and Furious movies at the beginning of November and didn't see anything except the untitled upcoming Netflix cartoon listed. Then right before Christmas, my friend told me that the first three films are on Netflix, and sure enough, they showed up for me. You even dial onto a mobile device for offline watching. I know that other regions have had them at all available at various times, but as far as I know, they haven't been on Netflix in the U.S. for a while. I tried Googling to see if I could figure out when they were added. No luck. I wonder if it has something to do with the new 4K editions they've been releasing this year anyway. Ah, just wanted to let you that know that sense. since so you can let people know in case this is actual news and not some weird glitch that I've been experiencing with my Netflix account, which, you know, Cassie wrote in too, it is the real, real deal. And I'm, and I'm I like that you guys keep us a uh, uh, Fast and Furious news newsed up. I like that, like keeps like post them up because like I didn't know it was on Netflix. You know, like I'm not that's not how I'm watching them. So yeah, let let the world know. So if you search Fast and Furious on Netflix, uh, the first three of the things that come up are the first three movies. Then there's the Fast and Furious animated show placeholder. Then Triple X. Then that oh. super fast movie that Brian just pointed out to us host too. Of Sl- host of High School Slumber Party he'll be he watch, was on our yeah. Too Fast Too Furious episode last lap then there's American Pie The Naked Mile I guess because it's about cars or maybe, maybe. about a mile I don't know maybe. then yeah. Death Race with uh, Jason Statham in the remake okay. then Triple X State of the Union Fastest Car which we talked about in here Hurricane Heist and Eight Miles that's quite a really sort of collection but yeah you know. damn what does Eight Mile do uh, I guess Miles I was thinking it was just like you know another one of these movies that teenage boys liked at the time i guess yes i don't know but that was the mailbag so thank you all for writing in shout out wes shout out cassie shout out joshua and shout out our mystery emailer who we will come back to later in the episode i was hoping you were gonna forget and say who it was damn nope okay too good i'm too good at this okay i know reminder patreon page patreon.com slash too fast too forever chip in a couple bucks get some swag when we make it shortly this year on the streets News oh. about the Fast and Furious movies. Do you want to do yours? First? Should we do that first, or should we do should we do the new segment first? We're going to do, do this first, just because in case okay. the new segment doesn't work out, we can cut it out. But on okay, the streets, perfect. the big thing is that tonight, as we're recording this, Thursday the third, uh, the Rock's The Titan Games Ooh. debuts on the NBC, which is his. He said it was something he he dreamt up as I think as a kid, and also some like like drunk ideas. I think he wrote there was like a story that came out today about it, but it's I think. Just like a rock host. I don't know exactly what it is. I don't know if it's like American Gladiators or if yeah, it's like it's, or it's Wipeout um, American or Ninja, Ninja Warrior, American Gladiators. There was one, what was the one um, that was on Netflix? Was it called Beast? It was something about the Beast, Beast Master maybe? I don't know. Beast something. There was one that we were watching on Netflix. And it's these like physical athletic games, essentially, is what it looked like to me from the commercials. I haven't seen it because it's obviously on now or comes, comes out tonight. Hmm. Okay. But yeah, we'll watch it. Rachel and I like them. They're fun. They're you know what I mean. They're stupid to put. Yep. Like it's something you could put on and drink and like. It's cook. something you could cross stitch to. Cro- use something you could cross stitch to. It absolutely is. Yeah. That's really the only thing that I've uh, made note of. Obviously, other than the first three movies are now on Netflix. If you want to check those out. But what you got? You got anything on the streets? Um, no, I didn't. That's no, I have nothing on the streets. That's that was a good one. I was getting ready for the other stuff. So hold on, let me see what this says though. Vin Diesel apparently came out and said he hopes that. Fast Eight made Paul Walker proud. No, oh. and he said that that's I, I think that's pretty honorable and just in okay. general. So yeah. he put you know he's posting some pictures with them and stuff like that and and family above everything. But yeah, that's that's actually kind of cool. So that was that was all I got. All right. So we have a we have a new segment here. I want to try which, it. I'm gonna try it. Joe I was, was a little bit nervous to try. This is something he had an idea for months and months ago. That yeah. we saved for a new lap, a new you, new year, new year, new you, new lap. Oh, 
It's it kind of that's kind of fitting, right? It's called Stars of the Stars. And Joe, why don't you tell us a little bit about this? So I had an idea, and I was saying I, I wanted to see if the Zodiac for the the actors or the characters in the movie had any kind of play into this. You know, Zodiac's usually pretty broad, but it's also kind of hammers some stuff home. Okay, so I went to one of one of our kind of handbooks, right? Okay. And I went to the Fast and Furious wiki. Sure. It's the first time doing this. I'm going to pick a character. I'm going to find their birthday. And I'm going to see what their Zodiac says for today. I went and I was like, you know, first movie. I just mm-hmm. randomly picked Dom. And I'm sure. like, we're going to do Dom in this movie, you know, because he's you not in Brian the next, next one. Movie. Sure. Do, yeah, you exactly. Brian next one, yep. Mm-hmm. You, knew, you knew where I was going with this. So I was like, okay, Dom's birthday, August 29th. Okay. That means he is a Virgo. Okay. So I was like, you know what? Like, I don't know. This this idea kind of sounds a little lame to me. But listen to Dom's Zodiac from January 3rd. Okay. Mercury is finishing up its transit of your home and family sector. Hold on. I just realized that between, <laughs> between our fan fiction episode last time and our Stars of the Stars segment this time, you have really emerged from your chrysalis this new year with some very bold uh, new directions for this podcast in terms of things that I guess mostly maybe preteen girls might be into, but, you know. I, I, I'm pretty much a preteen girl, so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Where, how did you just learn this? But anyways, Mercury is finishing up its transit of your home and family sector, and I was like, you know what, I, I think I have to do this, and we'll move into harmony with your sign later tomorrow. Before it moves on, however, it can be an important time for opening up about your personal life, whether it's through discussions with or about loved ones, and it's from giving matters further thought. You may swing between feeling indecisive to acting upon impulse today, but the best route now is to aim for moderation in your actions while letting your mind go. It's a fine day for letting go of petty matters and for focusing instead on more spiritual and emotional issues. There can be inventive solutions to home-related problems and new mm. approaches with family and loved ones. And I was like, if that doesn't speak to Dom in this movie, you, Mercury's in your home and family sector. You have problems. You might act impulsive by like going to steal the last truck. You want to open up about yourself a little bit. So that's, that's Dom's horoscope for today. It was scarily related to The Fast and the Furious, the first one. And I was like, you know what? I think I'm going to think I'm going to have to do it. So here's my problem with horoscopes. I feel like it's so vague and like generally positive that anyone could draw inspiration from that. Like everybody it's sort of like, you know, yeah, you go to a psychic. I know like that's I know that's the point, but it just feels like but people who put so much weight into it, like, oh my God, like my 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 sign's coming into focus or whatever. Whatever the terminology is. Just like, yeah, but it applies to everything. Yeah, but this but come on, how dead on is this one? I mean it's it's pretty it's pretty dead on, but I feel it's like that also creepy, could apply right? to a lot of the people though. I used Dom's birthday, a character that I didn't know his birthday. I randomly picked him. But I mean, I feel like it could apply to a lot of characters even in this movie. Yeah, true. So that's all, that's all mean, I'm saying. But but I mean, but it fits the movie. It does fit the movie. It fits the theme. So. Stars of the Stars. Stars of the Stars. If you I like just, the segment. I'm, I'm, gonna see, I'm just going to see how it works out. Where I'm going to keep doing a couple more. a couple more. episodes, yeah. Yeah, and see how it feels. Maybe this, just this lap, maybe the next lap. Who the fuck knows? So. Right in, family at cageclub.me. Let us know what you think of Stars of the Stars. If you like it, if you want more of it, if you have an idea to change it, if you have an idea to evolve make it, better. it, make it better, yeah. whatever. Let me know. Family at cageclub.me. We also have, before we get to a commercial break, we've got Go one ahead. more thing to do, Joe. New lap observations. Oh, okay, yes. So here's, here's what I got. So I don't really have specific things, but... I made two, I made a lot of notes this time around, but... You did? The the things that I most noticed this time around, not really because of this movie, but because of things we're doing with the podcast. So number one, I was looking at Johnny Tran so much more differently, or... Right? Differently now because of Ellie Toretto. Exactly. Which, not a real character, but made me think differently of Johnny Tran. On that note, when I was watching, I was like, I forgot how much he likes motorcycles yes oh because like i didn't even i mean like you know i obviously knew that he rode the motorcycle but at the same time it's like his crew is the motorcycle crew and ellie toretto likes motorcycles too and i was like oh wow wow all right she has a deep understanding of the fucking the, the fastiverse man i'm yeah. telling you okay so that was number one and number two i was thinking about why i was watching the movie not like this on purpose but like thinking 
minute by minute, like, oh, that was like that would have that's gonna be a cool minute to talk about. You know what okay, I mean? Like, there's just cool. like a lot of things that happen, yeah. or like there's just like a particular like a, a weighty moment or something that I thought it was cool to just like think about that not too far from now. We'll yeah. be breaking this down minute by minute and just how that's going to play out. And I was just thinking, especially because of this movie, because we're going to be doing this movie first in the minute by minute breakdown. Yeah. It's going to be this uh, this weird kind of special thing. So uh, okay. that, those are my big takeaways. It wasn't really... You didn't have like a specific moment about it. You just said that you just were thinking minute by minute. That's it was it. just changing the way that I was watching it. Okay. Um, although, the, the, if, if I have to say, the, the one thing that I, I noticed the most was that uh, Jesse said he wants to win a second car for his dad for when his prison dad gets jail. out of prison. Yes. Yes. Um, yeah, I thought that was, so that was that. okay. We learned a lot about Jesse. We also learned that Jesse has ADD. We know uh, that, that cars just yeah. make sense to him. Yeah, I mean, like we learn, but in the in the movie, right? But like, you yeah. know, Je- I mean, obviously, we learn a lot about Jesse in this one because Jesse dies in this one. There's a, there, he, he shares a lot. He opens up a lot in this. Yeah, he does. This movie. He does. For me, the biggest thing that I I noticed but didn't notice is I, I was really drawn into that like first Toretto's Cafe scene. Not that I'm not any other time, but like I was really intently watching that. And um, two things. Dom is in the back, and he's working on something. And it really almost looks like he's trying to fix a VCR. Huh, okay. So I was like, maybe that's a little bit of foreshadowing about the DVD players, you know? Maybe. What, like, he's normally like a like a, a grease monkey gearhead. But, like, he's fixing a VCR? Like, why would he be doing... You know what I mean? So, like, there's that. I found my new favorite, favorite quote from this movie. When Vince and Brian are done fighting... <laughs> Dom goes, get over there, Vince. And Vince is like, he started or something. And Dom just looks at him and goes, you embarrass me. Yeah, I wrote that down too. And I was like, whoa. That is like a, a top tier level diss. Relax, don't push it. You embarrass me. <laughs> exactly. Can you imagine? Like, if I was with you and we were like out like getting a drink or something and I was th- doing anything and you were like, relax, you embarrass me. I'd be like, oh, whoa, whoa. Like, you know, yeah. like, I would have, like, stuttered, like, burp, like, my whole body would reset. I'd be like, what the fuck just happened? <laughs> but yes, so I think that's one of my new favorite quotes of this movie. I mean, we obviously know a lot of the quotes of it, but that's one that, like, gets kind of lost in the, in all of the other goodness, so. Yeah, I think, I think this was a good way to start things off. I think we are, with a fresh perspective, a couple of fresh perspectives. I told uh, you, dude. this through I'm, new eyes. I'm telling you, the, the fucking, the, the, you are my lifespan is going to make a lot of, interesting things happen in our brains we're unlocking new creative parts of our brains so we're taking that pill from limitless yeah we are yeah that that's, that's that just pill. adhd medicine trust me i've eaten enough of them we're so. just like uh also like lucy just unlocking 100 percent of her brain before she can control time and space yeah exactly have you seen lucy lucy's a good movie no i haven't seen it but i'm assuming that's a tip of the hat to lsd oh i guess i don't know you never it was uh, directed together? by i think luke Besson, who did like fifth element and did Nikita and did Ooh. a bunch of movies that are weird and trippy and good and stuff. So uh, go go watch Lucy. That's what I'm trying to say. Anyway, we're gonna take a break. We'll be right back after this commercial messages. Uh, we'll be back with the Mikester to join us for Lap Three, Episode One: The Fast and the Furious, from 2001. <laughs> Here's the first one with the Mikester. <laughs> and this episode is brought to you by Starkist Tuna, for those of you who like the tuna. Shout An out, industry innovator, Starkist. Starkist was the first brand to introduce Starkist single serve pouch products, which include tuna creations, salmon creations, kids' creations, and gourmet selects. As America's favorite tuna, Starkist represents a tradition of quality, consumer trust, and a commitment to sustainability. So, if you like the tuna, Eat Starkist. The chicken of the sea. Hey, 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 hey. Spoilers sorry. for the beginning of the topic. Hey. Sorry, cut that out. Cut that out. <laughs> this is this is a Starkist family, and you know it. We are joined, as we've been alluding to for what feels like forever, forever. now. He is finally here for the ride-along lap. We've got two. We've got Lou, and we've got Mikester. Hello, resident historian Mike Manzi. Welcome to the program. Hello, family. Thank you so much for having me. I've, I feel like I've been waiting so long to be here, but it's, I'm so happy I finally arrived that I've pulled up and parked next to you and oh, we can oh. get into Fast and the Furious. So we specifically, we the only reason why Mike wasn't on the Building the Family lap, one, he was already family, duh. And two, Aww. we we knew we were going to have you on the ride along. 
Like we we wanted to give you a whole lap. That's that's the only reason why you guys haven't met Mike before now, but you've heard a lot about him, I'm sure. And uh, he's here. I feel so privileged, guys. I've listened to every episode, and oh. I'm just like thrilled by your fan base. Like it is amazing, <laughs> just like the community that you have brought together the and the family. Extended- the extended family, yeah, it's it's terrific. So I want to say hi to them first and foremost. And you know, uh, I'm a little nervous. I, I didn't expect that many people to be following. So <laughs> no, um, don't be nervous. They're all disappoint. friendly. At least, the, at least what they said to us. Maybe they said pissed off shit to Joey. Well, that he you missed. Read. You know, there's there's no way you could have heard it because we just talked about it in the opening segment. But uh, Wass, who writes in every every episode, wrote in and said he can't wait to meet Mike via the podcast and hear his thoughts and input and everything like that so you've already got one more person in your corner mike so the fans out there they, they love us they love you so we're all good Don't and fast and it. furious so it's, it's an easy sell fast and the furious yeah nice. all right now mike you know the drill so actually here so joe i'm gonna ask i'm gonna ask you a question before i ask mike the questions so we've got the either ors right we've got about a dozen questions yeah do we do them all tonight or do we space them out over the laps Ooh. or over the episodes Ooh. of the lap Ooh. i kind of like because spacing them we've teased a little bit that we are going to have a special guest at some point in this in this lap um, and, we, and we've got to <laughs> we've got to have him complete his questions it might be someone him? who's on already him it might be someone who's on already I don't know oh. uh, but we have to have him complete his questions oh. so there's gonna be a lot of questions this lap but I, I'm, we're, we're, we'll do maybe we'll do like two or three and we'll see how it feels how many do but... we have that's a really good question. Um, one, so many questions. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve ish. Okay. So I think one or two, one or two, Nep. Before we get to the either or lightning round, though, we have to check in with Mike. His history. We, obviously, he has seen every movie. He has also been watching along with us. With us. Yeah. Not just listening, but watching along as you and I watch along, which is so he's on commitment. lap three. It's commitment to a point that is, is honestly a little unhealthy, although <laughs> Mike and I have never claimed anything really healthy about the way that he and I watch movies. Right. You know, you've been watching along with us. So in, in terms, you've obviously seen all of them. How many times did you say that you've seen all the movies in total? Oh, brother. Um, I think i got to go one by one real quick. Okay, so go for it. Go for it. Definitely. So the first one, I mean, not counting the, the, the two previous Laps? I mean, how should I do this? I'm trying to think. No, well, why don't you go in order? Did you? Okay, so what was the first one you saw? Okay, so I saw the first one first in theaters. Wow, Ooh, okay. okay. Yeah, with like all my high school friends. My um, five dads? Yeah, my five dads were there. Absolutely. Go listen to High School Slumber Party to learn more about my five dads. Ooh. I do like that you and I have like seven podcasts together, and the podcast that we that you have revealed the most about your it makes sense, but your high school experience and your band is not one that either of us do. It's just one that you're on right. every once in a while. So go yeah. check out High School Slumber Party to learn about my five dads. We saw it with my five dads, your punk. Yeah, bands. and I think the only actor I knew at the time in here was Jordana Brewster. To be honest, wow. I knew her from like the faculty. Really? Um, yeah. Like no I didn't Vin? know any of these. No, Paul not at Walker? the time. Wow. Nope. Okay, I that's great. This aware. is a crazy take. Okay. So the other reason we were all there is because of the cars. Because yeah. uh, my friends in high school were pretty car crazy. I'm not a gearhead or anything. I mean, I could change a tire. Yeah. Uh, maybe, maybe the oil. I'm not quite sure. But cars have always just been a big part of life in my family. My dad was a huge car guy. Like, always went to car shows with him. Um, when I was DJing, I DJ a lot of car shows and stuff. Ooh, so like, that's it's really always cool. just sort of been there. I have a and... I have a cool story. Can I tell? Can I tell us the tiny cool story in between? Yeah, it's your show. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> um, so we went to the New York car show uh, last year, and it was me and my buddy Zach and um, our other friend joined us, and and he had some friends that like work on cars in Greenwich, and so he's like, hey, they're gonna be here. Like they have like a like a booth kind of thing and we're like okay like cool where are they you know so like we're at um the Jarvis center we're like walking around and we're like where the fuck are these guys and he's like oh no they're not like up here and you know because like up top it's like toyota and audi and like all the main cars and he's like no they're, they're down they're downstairs and we're like there's a downstairs it's so, like we go downstairs and they had what was called the dub basement and it was just like monster energy drink and just fucking like <laughs> so fast and the furious and just like dubstep blaring and like it was like a full rave in the bot like in the bottom side of the of the car show and i was like oh they definitely put them down here so when you said you dj'd car shows this is what I- i'm not imagining you playing dubstep but i i can see it now so. or did he 
Or did he? <laughs> Who knows? Okay, continue on. Sorry. Car shows. See, now well, the first one in theaters with, yeah. your five, with my five dads. Okay. The second one is kind of funny. I, I didn't even know. I, like, completely missed the second one entirely. Like, I, you just I missed just it? Was, yeah, like, I didn't even know about it until part three came out. And I was like, they made a part two? <laughs> like, it was just not on my radar, I guess. But I saw part three... Before I ever saw part two, okay, uh, and I've I've seen part three a lot. Like that's a great movie. I love it. I have just like a, a love of Japan as well, so yeah. it plays into that a whole lot. When we get to that episode, I have a story Ooh. to share about Japan as well, Ooh. my experience there and stuff. So I never know like you went. Connection. I never knew you went. So that's really cool. And that little tease, yeah, for episode three of this of lap back three. In four weeks <laughs> for Tokyo and uh, and like I just. I don't know. I love that one, and so it kind of um, rekindled, I guess, my interest in the series, and I started following it more. I saw part four on DVD. Cause you I see wasn't four before cool. you saw two? I actually did, yes. Okay. So here's what's up. So like, I saw four on DVD, because mm-hmm. I wasn't quite sure if I was going to go back to the theaters for this yet. You know, I was like, are they going to continue from three? Yeah. But they ended up sort of soft rebooting it. And, you know, we'll get more into that. That's the one I've seen the least. I think I've only mm-hmm. seen that like three times. The one time I've, I, oh, four times, four times. Including the rewatches? Like the yeah, including re-watches? the rewatches. Okay. Including the rewatches. Okay. And then when five. Also, for the record, just putting that there, four times as the least in a series of eight is still a lot of, you know what I mean? Like. <laughs> yeah, I didn't even, when I said it out loud. No, I didn't because I mean, that's still more like, I've only seen four maybe three times now. Yeah. Once before and then twice here. So still, okay, but go, continue. So when five was coming out in theaters, I was like, okay, this looks incredible. I got to go, I got to go back and watch them all and get ready for part five because okay. it looks like they're going to try to take this to the next level. And so like, I remember sitting Boy, did down you and have actually, no idea what was about to happen. Really? And like, I, I remember I was sat down, I watched them all again with my dad and like, he loved these movies too, because he was a big car guy and stuff. And so we watched, we did sort of like a marathon over a week or so before going to the theaters to see part five so we were like all caught up we knew all the twists and turns yeah you're amped we knew, yeah we were aware of like what was going on with letty you know, and Nas. Just, <laughs> exactly so <laughs> you we were, were doing whippets date. just on the couch <laughs> stop pushing the whippets lap it's I'm not gonna happen so for pushing. a while it's gonna happen okay go ahead. we could do the whippets a minute how about that oh like a mini that. episode whippets. I like it. Okay. Anyway, go on. Sorry, Mike. I just have to, uh, have to yell. At my, yeah. I have to yell at Joe every time he brings up whippets. But go ahead. Go continue. So, so the count kind of gets hard to keep track of with like five, six, and seven because like I, was, I saw five, six, seven, and eight in theaters like the week they came out because uh-huh. I was just like from five on I was like just all in for okay. sure. I was like going back and revisiting the movies from time to time or whenever they were on TV. I'd stop and watch parts of them Same. and just be reminded of like how awesome they are. And and so like yeah. I've just seen those like quite a bit, you know, like before doing the rewatches, like to keep up with you guys, I'd see, I'd say I'd seen like five, six and seven, at least two or three times, like start to finish. Yeah. Eight, actually, I've only seen, I saw it in theaters. I watched it for Watch the Throne and when you guys watched it. That's so, I guess like after part four, um, part eight is my least seen one of these movies. But it's also the newest, times. that makes sense. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they're tied, but yeah, and it's the newest. Yeah, so that's sort of the, uh, you know, the overall brief history of me and Fast and the Furious. All right, so now, Mike, you know what's coming next. Rank these movies. Oh, boy. Number five is number one. Are you saying this like like John Yu from, from like, you know, Jason Mendoza from The Good Place? Are you quoting that? You remember that? We've talked about that, right? That was one of the things you added to your your Instagram story where he's like, five is one, six is two. Remember that? <laughs> yes, yeah. Yep, I am doing that, but I am also saying I think five is number one. For five me. is one, okay. Okay. I feel like you can kind of jump in at part five. It sort of kicks off like this trilogy within the middle of the series, which I is kind of cool. Yeah, like, I agree. That's a really awesome thing. I think the five, six, seven is a nice arc. And then I say I like number three second. Okay. Same. We're big. Hold on, let me start writing this down. So then I gotta say, hmm, five, three. I, I gotta go six. Okay. Then I'm going one. Okay. Then I'm really gonna flip on you guys. I'm going two. Okay. When I finally went back and watched two, I don't know. I just loved it. It just, it just popped for me. I thought it just had like an energy to it that was a lot of fun. It's real street race sort of eccentric. I really have a lot of fun watching that one. So let's see. Five, three, six, one, two, 
Then I got to go seven. Okay. Then four. Then no. Well, hmm. <laughs> eight and four. Eight. Eight and four. But they flip flop. But at this current at this current lap, it's eight and four. So we'll see okay. what happens by the end. Okay. All right. Yeah, that's a good list. And I'll go like a little more into those when we get into your, those episodes. Your list so. kind of seems like one of my early first lists. Like my first ranking before the rewatch, like through and doing the first lap, it was very, very similar to yours. Yeah, I'm looking at yours right now. The only the, the big difference is that you had Joe, you had number six at seven. Oh, and Mike had a three. That was the big difference. Yeah. But everything else you're pretty close on. Yeah, that's what I thought too. But like your guests say, uh, often it's you know even though the low ones are down on this list, they're still very high up on right. lists of movies that I enjoy and, and, watch and that again. are good and yeah. that I like. Yeah, yeah. You don't so, watch a movie you hate four times, you know, so it's like... Yeah, exactly. Are there other questions that we need to... Because, I mean, normally, like last lap, Joe, we were doing the most and least family moment. I don't know if there's a ride-along question here. Hmm. Is there a ride-along question? I don't know. Who, I don't think so. I was, trying, I was thinking who, about this earlier today. I couldn't come up with one. It, how about this? It's it's kind of an in between of like a Stanley yourself, but it's also a ride along question. In this movie, yeah, what character would you want to ride along with, or what car would you want to ride in? Ooh, I like either or. It can be both or two separates. Hmm. If I had to ride along with anybody, it will be Jordana Brewster because she's gorgeous and I love her. And so that shout I would, out Rachel. Shout out, <laughs> hi Rachel. <laughs> I would love to have just been in that part where, like, we just came from a date and she drives me home, and I think that would just be, like, the coolest thing ever. And car-wise, purely for the movies, it would have to be Dom in the RX-7, right? The red RX-7 they had, like, his, like, mm-hmm. his car. Like, I want, I want to drive with Dom. I want to feel how Dom drives. So, so now, Mike, we, you don't, we don't, you also don't know this because we just talked about this in the opening, that we are going to bring in some trivia from IMDb for this, and Joe, that was that normally what he uh, he normally only drives American Muscle, right? Yes. But this is one of the only two times I think that Dom drives uh, not a Charger. A, yeah. Challenge so throughout charger. the Fast and Furious series, Dom is typically seen driving only domestic cars. Dom domestic. Yeah. The only times he does not drive a domestic car in this film and during the London chase scene in the Fast and Furious Six, where he drives a BMW. Oh, that's right. So. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. I also feel like, and this is also me coming from a place where I don't really know cars. I feel like BMWs are more like Americanized than like a Subaru or <laughs> you know a Mazda. You know what I mean? Uh, I don't think of them as tricked out as so much. Yeah. You're not going to take, like, the bonnet off and expose the engine of yeah. the BMW and, like, put Transformer stickers on it or, or any yeah. kind of decals. It's a, different, it's a different culture. Although I do know a friend that is really into BMWs, and they do race them, and he loves them, but you're right. They don't do a lot of the same things you see with, like, Honda Civics and Mazdas and stuff like that, Toyotas. So, Joe, you were saying that the person you want to most drive with is Mia, but the car you want to most drive in is that red Mazda Yes, RX-7? And, and have Dom drive it, too. I was kind of cheating. I, w- I wanted to be driven around by both of them. That's why I was confused, because you are a dirty, yeah. filthy cheater. We, we're not, we're not, we're just, we just came up with a question. There's no. There's not even a baseline. Exactly. <laughs> Here you are <laughs> breaking all the rules. I was, I was pointing for the fences, man. I'm going to say... I'll give, I'll give our guest time to think, because I just... Okay, you know, we, we sprung it on him, but I'm going to say if the car that I want to most be driven by, or the mo- the car in. I want to be in, or the scene I want to be in, really, is when he pulls up to the guy who says, more than you make in a year, Ferrari, and Dom just turns to Brian and says, smoke him. That's a great- I want to be oh, yeah. in that car scene. I want to be in that while he's like tearing up the PCH to go to that restaurant that Wes and his wife stopped at, had food at, took the picture at, sent us in, last yeah. lap. Shout out, Wes. That's the car I want to be in. I want to be... Like, I think being driven by Mia is really cool. I'm going to say... I want to be driven I wanna, by Jordana Brewster more than Mia, to be honest. Well, okay. I want to be driven by a car... I want to be driven by Johnny Johnny Tran. $100,000 oh. under the hood. You know, oh, nice. he died. Like, I can never... That can never be the answer again. So I want him to drive me around. <laughs> I feel like he's, you know, got some really cool... Like, I would love to be driving Johnny Tran and he just, like, turns the radio and, like, K-pop comes on and he's just, like, super into it. Like, that would be <laughs> super yeah. cool. Lance in the back seat, like, yeah. scowling because mm-hmm. he usually rides shotgun. Yeah. yeah. So oh, I want to be yeah. driven by Johnny Tran, but I want to be in that car scene. Maybe that's what we do. In that car scene of tearing down the PCH, uh, smoking the Ferrari. So yeah. Those I, are my I answers. That's a good answer. So, Mike, 
Who do you want to be driven by, and what car scene do you want to be in? Okay, so car scene definitely is, uh, I want to be Leon when he's blocking off the road and the Pizza Hut guy pulls up. <laughs> and, wait, do you know who the Pizza Hut guy is? Is that the director? Director Rob Cohen. Yeah, his Hitchcock little mm -hmm. cameo. Yeah. And I want to, yeah, I want to be the roads closed pizza guy, goddamn street racers. Yeah. yeah like that. <laughs> so that's the scene. And then, and then who do you want? Who do you want to drive you around? Probably Hector, okay. like in the low rider, getting like the Ooh. bumping up and down the block, maybe passing around a little something in the back seat. I and bet just Hector likes, and his friends are the are, are some of the most fun. Like he's trying to go legit the racing, right? So that's why he's not racing, and he just kind of like organizes and stuff. So yeah, I bet they right. know where like all the parties are, and oh, maybe I sure. could get some DJing gigs through him or oh, something. Cool, so yeah. connect through Heck. I like that. That was a that was a well thought out move. I liked it. Well Thanks. thought out indeed. All right, Mike. We got. We're gonna do some some either ors here. Start you <laughs> off. Not the whole lap. Not the whole round. So excited. Do some. So here. Do you want to start at the beginning, Joe, or should we start at the end? Should we start the like the we bigger should do questions? We should the appropriate we... ones. Okay. Are you a Brian or are you a Dom? Hmm. You know, I think I'm more. A pro... Gosh, this is tough. Like I'm more. It's of a... handsome though. I think. It... Well, but they're both <laughs> kind of handsome in their own way. Uh, I think I'm more of a dom just because Brian is such like a like a rule kind of guy. Like you know, he's like so clean and follows the rules and stuff. And, like I was never really one to be like that, that much of, like a rule follower. Like I could never be a cop. I think yeah, like, that kind of thing. Even though he broke from the ranks and stuff, um, or goes back and forth with it. But so yeah, I think. In that regard, I think I'm a little more of a Dom. Plus, I have a sister, and I don't know if that counts. Yeah. Brian didn't. I get it. But. Yeah, I get it. I mean, Dom might have two sisters. Who knows? Um, <laughs> all right, Mike, are you more of a Mia or a Letty? Yeah, definitely a Mia. Like, I, I could never pull off those boots that Letty wears, like, when she That's first steps out of the car. That's such an iconic stuff. scene. <laughs> like, it's so like, early in the movie, iconic. and you see the Hot Topic yeah. boots. Just that whole attitude. Like, I, I couldn't even, I probably, it would be like looking into the sun if I saw her on the street or something. Yeah, like I just same. just wouldn't be able to. So I think Mia, I could kind of at least, like, talk to and order a sandwich from. <laughs> um, and then the only other question I'm going to ask you today, and this is a big one, this is the one that we added in the last episode with Kim Basine. Mike, who's your favorite character in these movies? Roman. Wow. Damn. Roman. Dude, I can't entirely explain it. Maybe because, like, I used to just, like, be kind of like just like that guy in the room that always tried to make people laugh when I was younger and stuff. Uh, yeah. Not so much these days and everything, but I don't know. I just, he feels the most relatable to me as like a normal, he feels like the guy who's just dropped in there like, what the, like, because he comments always like, this is ridiculous what we're doing and everyone else thinks it's so normal, but he's like the audience most of the time. So, ah, that's uh, a good I like, point. I kind of like, even though he, when he's introduced in part two, he's sort of. You know, he's a lot different, I'd say. Like, he lightens up a lot by, by part five and stuff. But, like, still, I I, I definitely like him the most. I yeah. yeah, I never thought about him as, as being almost the voice of the audience. But you're right. He's he's actually always the only skeptical one. Everybody else is like, okay, like, we're just going to hack the, the planet. And he's like, what? You can't hack a planet. <laughs> and, like, just it's out of nowhere. not a plane or a planet. Exactly. And it's always, like, him being like, I'm the voice of reason. And then they just do it anyways. But yeah, he's always the, like at least the skeptical one. Yeah. So those are. I think that's. I think that's all the questions we're going to ask today. Because the other ones we'll come back. You know, we'll do some other ones in. Obviously, we'll. Well, by the end of the lap, we will have all the questions answered from the Mikester, which was his DJ name. We have to. I guess we. I don't know if we ever explained that, but he was saying that he DJed, uh, you know, car yes. events. But his his DJ name was DJ Mikester. He went by that on Twitter for a while. He's still the Mikester on Twitter. A shout out, Mikester. Favorite character. Roman. All right, Joe. One thing we, now. We're, let's talk about the, the movie, Joe. One thing I noticed this time around, again because it was burning my brain for the Zimbio quiz. Okay. Did you catch the line? He's like gravity. Everything just gets pulled to him. Yes. Yes. Are, were they? Were, is it when they're on the date? Yeah. So they're in this, yes, this, this Mexican because restaurant. Because Brian asks Mia how the team come to be, and Mia says Vince grew up with my brother. Well, he never grew up, as you can tell. Yes. They're friends since they were kids. Letty grew up down the street, always into cars. You know, she had Dom's attention. Then she goes on and says, Jesse and Leon just sort of showed up one night, never ever left. Dom's just like gravity. Everything gets pulled to him, even you. And then Brian says, the only thing that pulled me in is you. Being friends with your brother is just a bonus. So I think in that Zimbio quiz, hint for you, Mike, if you want to try to get Dom, pick that quote. Probably gives you some, uh, some bonus Dom points. So uh, Shouldn't the quote be more like 
Dom's like a black hole. Like everything gets pulled to him. I don't know. I guess gravity works think, too. But you would, that, that, that makes sense. But yeah. you know, sounding like gravity sounds cooler. I think. But you know. oh, it sounds way cooler. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, that's that's not a bad call. But yeah. Well, Mike, you'll be very interested in Wes's sister's take on the the gravity pulling down the planes in yeah. seven parachutes. The parachutes. Yeah. You're gonna have to listen oh. to the opening part of this episode, Mike. We're not gonna we're not gonna spoil it for if you. Dom actually, if his powers are revealed to be some kind of gravity power, Ooh, I like that a lot. Anti gravity nice. powers. Mm-hmm. So, then, Mike, why don't we talk about this movie? Uh, talk about let's since you are our honored guest this entire lap. Why don't you talk about a little bit about your thoughts on the movie? Uh, we know where it ranks in your rankings, but you know favorite moments, least favorite moments, thoughts, like things that you've been shouting at the podcast player of your choice <laughs> for the first two laps while you've been waiting to get on here. Just hit us with your, your overview of the first The Fast and the Furious. Oh, man, I, where to begin, really? I mean, it was, it, it just flew by this time, to be honest. Like, I almost wanted to watch it twice, but um, I have to, like, pace myself. But instead, you, know? you but, watched yeah. the original Fast and the Furious. Oh, that's right. I did. I watched the 1957 Roger Corman Ooh. produced Fast and Furious movie. It's like a 75 minute exploitation flick. It's not that bad. It's sort of like a robbery. This guy tries to cross the border by doing one of these races that goes to Mexico. It's kind of interesting. Oh, that's cool. So, yeah, I went all all the way back to uh, for this lap. This was just a lot of fun. I watched it on... Um, it's an Ultra HD, so it's like one mm-hmm. of my first Ultra HDs. Ooh. It looked beautiful. Um, Does it keep the just... same, like, 90s grittiness? Because unlike you guys, oh. I'm watching them not in Ultra HD. And when I was watching it this time, it had that very... 90s kind of VCR feel to it, right? Like, it yeah. felt like you were mm. playing it through that. Like, e- So I can imagine, even if it's crispy HD-wise, it still feels kind of grainy just from, like, the, the the matter. See, I did not think so at all. This looks super smooth. Like, I think that's a difference so far that I've noticed between ah. Ultra HD and Blu-ray is, like, they're... See, I like less grain in when it's not supposed to be there i guess i don't know exactly what the process is but i think the movie looked beautiful uh in ultra hd so no complaints on that joey did you watch it in ultra hd i did and actually because i i got it because it just came out i think semi recently i don't know if it came out since we last did the last lap it might have um but i got it for my birthday and what i liked about it what i noticed about it is on on the cover and this may also be on blu-rays but on the cover it says the original, which is their way of saying, like, yeah, we know the naming is confusing, but uh, this is the first one. So if you're looking for the first one, get this one. Okay. Uh, it does look really super slick. I don't think you should be. You probably wouldn't be surprised that uh, there are there's a huge back, a uh, huge contingency of people on the internet who surprise surprise like to complain about things. Okay. But to complain about movies, like I think especially the first Terminator movie has been so gussied up and like cleaned up. That it's like a completely different experience. Okay. And people don't like that when they're watching it. I was, even a I Blu-ray, was let alone this. 4K. Like, Mike and I were talking about this on a recent Cage Club Revisited, where I was saying that I was watching Die Hard in 4K, and like, I'm not sure how much you can really sort of clean up something that was on film, but I think you can probably just like smooth things out and make things look nicer. You know, so it doesn't always work, but I think here, like, it, okay. it doesn't have the grittiness, but it, this it is what looks I was, beautiful. This is this is exactly what I was asking. I, I, it's like. Is it a better experience? Do you lose this? Do you lose it for the worse? Or do you, do you gain something for the better? You know? Because for me, like, at the time I watched this on fucking Stolen Cable, now when I see it, the way that it feels like I should watch this is on VCR. Like, on tape. You know? Like, it just feels mm-hmm. like a movie that is gritty enough that it should be watched analog like that. And so, I don't know... Maybe I'll have to revisit it, and we'll have to, like, watch the VCR, like, the fucking, you know, tapes of it one time. As gritty as the Flyers mascot? <laughs> yes. Uh-huh. Yeah, do a little comparison watching, just of all the different, you know, Yeah, because uh, I wonder how many of them came out. It had to be only the first two at the most that came out on tape, right? I'm on there. I'm on, I'm, I'll take a look on eBay. But, okay. Mike, continue. What, what else do you think? What else... Uh, what else caught you uh, this time around? I love Dom's introduction. Like, when you first see him, he's in the back of that little... Toretto's like, Cafe. Toretto's Cafe that yeah. they, and Market, right? Mm-hmm. That's a little market, too. And Market. And he's just, like, behind the cage, and you don't see his front or anything, and he's just sort of, like, pacing a little, or he goes to get a soda or something, and uh, 
it, he just reminded me of like an animal at the zoo or something Ooh. like that or just like this guy you know he needs to be contained or something or it's just sort of some kind of not really foreshadowing that this guy is like an animal or anything but just some kind of thing i felt like yeah he is an animal and like he he's in a cage right now but they're gonna let the beast out at some point yeah now that you say that without without him actually delivering any like lines there it is a really good acting scene for him that he just like kind of like you know sneers at brian and like grabs a soda and it's like what do you like he's like letting him know like i know you're talking to my sister he's like not getting involved but he's like i see this you know it's a it's a cool scene yeah and do you guys know Dom's first line in the series? It's a pretty good line. We might have talked about it before. Is it you embarrass me? He goes, what did you put in that sandwich? Oh. oh, that's right. Yes, he does. He looks at me and goes, what did you put in that sandwich? When well, they do you, you? Or do, I, I think I talked about this on the first lap, but do either of you remember the first line in the movie at all? The first spoken line? No. No. It's So there's the whole opening sequence where they jack the truck. It's wordless. Yeah. And then oh, yeah. Brian is doing his like testing. He comes out and just says, shit. And that's it? <laughs> that's it? Oh, wait. No, doesn't the guy at the docks, he's on the phone with... Oh, I don't count that, but maybe, I guess, but, you know. Uh, that's fine. That's maybe, cool. maybe. Well, my notes say different. Anyway, I just did a little bit of okay. cursory research on eBay. Looks like only the first two run VHS, but uh, somebody was just selling both of them together, Seven forty nine, free shipping, used, just purchased them, so maybe a future lap will oh, be nice. VHS lap. We can watch um, them so, together. Yeah. Yeah, so I have I'm a VCR hooked up, so we're, we're good to go. I'm down to come down and watch it on tape like i think that'd be a fun <laughs> different experience it'd be really weird uh something that i i kind of i think i might have mentioned it to both of you or maybe i just mentioned it to joey the first thing that i saw this time i was watching the movie and i saw the exit um when they're boosting the first truck the very beginning like you know title card scene mm-hmm. they take the exit for new dock street so i was like oh that's like one of the first times we ever got like a real place in fact you know what i mean like like a a marker of like where they are in in Fast and the Furious. Oh, so that's that's a real place in in the real world. Yeah, apparently, I mean, like it was a big sign there. Like it didn't look like they placed it there. You know, the movie's like kind of cheap. Like they, they didn't like <laughs> they didn't like make a fake sign. So I looked up New Dock Street on Google Maps, and when you search New Dock Street, it takes you to this place that has t- like all of these tractor trailers parked in a street that is has construction going on so it looks so much like the place that they actually stole the truck from i was just in awe of like how how now google maps of new dock street like obviously i didn't get to the exit or anything like that like i just searched new dock street and like the first place it takes you to in california when you search that looks just like the place that they stole the truck from and i was like this is really crazy you know that how many years ago was this made versus like what google maps would and google maps obviously isn't like paying homage to fast and the furious they just have a car that fucking drives around or is it or is it who knows <laughs> but anyways go take a google maps look at uh, new dock street in california and and see what it looks like because it's pretty cool. One of the things I really love about the way this movie opens is something I know the director has just talked about. I mean, even when this first came out, he was talking about it a lot, is that he really tried to invoke the sense of like a modern day Western within this Ooh. movie. Have you guys talked about no, we haven't. those parallels at all whatsoever? No, we haven't yeah, talked so, about this at all. Go for it. So like the opening heist is like a train robbery, you know, and like yeah. the cars are horses I can and see the that. truck is the train and Toretto's crew is more of like a posse really and uh brian is sort of like a you know when the, they'd have like a u.s marshal come to town and sort of Ooh. try and like go undercover or something infiltrate and stuff so it's not in not entirely but he definitely had that on his mind and uh, of course you know the sort of like the point break uh parallels also yeah, we've talked about um, that and joe's finally yeah. next month gonna watch point break oh man i've seen it i watched it with you guys oh right yeah yeah am i am i going away for you to go to texas yeah yeah, I'm, I, like, I've seen it with you guys. Like, I just haven't watched it many times, and I also don't remember... Like, I never watched it with the thought process of, like, this is Fast... You know what I mean? This is related to Fast and the Furious. Yeah, so I've never put it in that... So next uh, next month, I'm making a conscious effort to watch Point Break to be more in tune with how it fits into uh, Fast and the Furious. Plus, I was telling Joe, Mike, that uh, one of our new favorite movies, Never Going Back, watches and has a couple jokes about point break in it which is just oh, so, yeah. so goddamn good also uh joe i don't want to spoil this but a lot of arizona iced teas in never going back for some reason oh, so oh, oh, oh. 
I do love really the up our iced up tea. our alley. I almost bought an Arizona iced tea at the store today. Oh, I meant to buy some NAS for this episode, Ooh. but instead I'm drinking a Corona Familiar. Ooh. Ooh. Familiar. Uh, all right, Mike, what else you got? What other, what other uh, thoughts, what other insights oh, I got, do you have? I, I want to talk about the, the um, Western thing that Mike brought up. Now that he brought it up, the parallels are great, and I definitely see it. But for me, when I was watching these movies, I never watched them. F- I watched them from the perspective of when I saw it as a small kid, and I never pieced those things together. So they were always like an original thing to me. But now looking at it as like this could be a modern train robbery and a Western, it makes a lot of sense. And that's a really interesting perspective for me to watch this one through again for the next time because it's something that I never put together. So thanks for that. And you might be watching a Western one day and all you have to be is like, this is like a uh, <laughs> like a Fast and Furious that t- period piece or something like that. <laughs> Resident uh, historian. Which I if they'll Mike ever Nancy. get to. Like, will Vin Diesel play his own father in one of these movies <laughs> someday? I don't know, but possibly. Maybe his grandfather. Um, I want to talk about Brian for a minute. Okay. Old Blue Eyes. Oh shit, sure. it's Brian. I love Paul Walker. I love him. And I think like by episode six, like episode six, by, by the sixth movie, like he's really like a fully formed sort of action star, like ready to go, which it's what made his, you know, passing so much more tragic because I really felt like he was going to be the one to carry the series, not Vin Diesel, Agreed. not The Rock or anything like that. Like, yeah. He's really stepping up. He's the main um, character. As yeah, much as yeah, Dom he is. is he is the actual main, like actor wise, I think he's the main character. But in this movie, I don't have any problem with him at all or anything, but as his character, and I love it, but he has this look on his face that he's just constantly like astonished by everything around I, him almost. Like he can't believe like he's in a street race. He can't believe that he's in this house with all these agents. Like he just can't believe he's on this date with Mia. Like I think it's kind of like it's fine. It services the character. Okay, but after a while, he just doesn't need to do much in this movie except act like he surprised. can't believe he's here. Like I can't believe I'm doing this. What really always surprised me when I watch this even though I've seen it now 3 times in the last like, you know, 13 months or whatever or more maybe, but I always forget how late in the movie it's told it's like it's revealed that he's a cop like not till 35 minutes into we know he's a cop and then not till like there's half an hour left does he tell anybody else he's a cop you know what i mean so i always forget this because i I just come into the movies knowing that he's a cop so like i don't even i don't even keep track of that and you you bring it up and it blows my mind every time you say it to me he's always established as a cop in my head and i like watching it now that you brought that up from the perspective of nobody else knows that he's a cop so when i'm watching it like I, I had this in the back of my head. Like, what do you guys think Harry did to have to hire Brian? Because the phone conversation that Harry has with Dom in the very beginning is a much different conversation if you know that Brian's a cop than it is if you don't know that Brian's a cop. Does Harry know that he's a cop? I think he has to because Dom calls Harry to try to get Brian fired, okay? And Brian kind of, like, takes the reins and goes, like, well, what did you tell him? And he's like, well, I told him good work is hard to find, and, like, you're one of my best workers, and, like, m- these excuses that, like, Brian has to be there. So it I seems hear you. it seems to me like Harry is in trouble for some reason, and the cops, like, he made, like, a plea deal that, like, he'll help Brian get into the street racing world if he doesn't do something. And I want to know... <laughs> And I want to know what Harry did. Because it seems like he's kind of involved, right? Like, why else would you not... If Dom called you and was like, fire this kid, you'd fire him if he didn't make any sense. Unless he has, like, a really complicated backstory where he's hired, like, a dozen kids in the last three months and they've and all, lets like, them live stolen in the, from him or quit. You know what I mean? He lets them live in the garage and gives them free parts. Hmm. Because Brian comes in and he's like, I'm going to need this NOS. And he's like, no, you don't. And he's like, give me two of them. And he's like, okay. And he just does it. So, like, Brian's, like, in control of this relationship. I never really, it never occurred to me or bothered me or anything like that. Like, I always just thought that, yeah, he didn't know Brian was a cop and he just liked Brian and it's been a couple of weeks and he's done a good job, you know, so far and the, the, he just is going to really? bat for this kid. I, it's weird. Yeah. I don't, I mean, I never thought that he was sort of in on the whole, like, uh, like that maybe he was even a undercover cop himself or something trying no, to be a guy. No, I don't think that. Running. I think Harry, like... Yeah. So in my head, how this plays out is that Harry was, like, in trouble for, like, selling stolen parts or t- 
tax fraud mm-hmm. or something. And the cops come up and they're like, Harry, you're going to go to jail. And he's like, well, what can I do about this? And they're like, look, we're looking for this guy stealing DVD players. Let this cop come work at your shop. Give him a place to like hide undercover and let him infiltrate the street racing world. And like, we'll talk about your situation. There's definitely room for Harry to come back, you know, in a later movie so we can figure out like what his connection is. But I would have thought because, you know, like Hector comes in later and he's like, hey, man, we need three of everything. And he just like pulls out this fucking wad of cash. It's got to be, you know, a couple G's. Right. Yeah. And like that does it i don't know that would sort of set off alarms uh, to me that things weren't on the up and up there to begin with like maybe but what yeah, what maybe just mean? tax I mean, fraud maybe it's like tax evasion like failure to report taxes that's what like i'm thinking it is he's it's selling like, like thousands that. of dollars in like cash items and then but he's still doing it with brian there you know like that's the thing well like, now they can't blow in. the cover you know what i mean the cops are trying to find <laughs> something else like I, catch 22 well that's not, it's not like catch 22 it's more like uh watch you know they're they're using it to like get to the bigger fish right so yeah you know if, if somebody comes in with like five grand that's going to maybe lead you to somebody who's stealing DVD exactly players. they're not going to like tell it. hector like no you can't pay cash like you know they're trying to find out who's involved and and the main suspect at the time is hector or like somebody that's involved with hector right because he's the one buying all the civic you. parts watch the conversation I, I i'm sure you guys are going to see this movie again but next time you watch the phone conversation watch like the tone and the acting of harry and see if you don't feel the same way that i do that there's like something deeper there just like the way the conversation goes it plays out really really weird if he doesn't know that brian's a cop i mean the weird thing to me though i think is that i've i've thought about this and then like never resolved in my brain and just like stopped thinking about it which i think is weirder that like <laughs> instead of like figuring out or just instead of not thinking about it or like having an answer i was just like oh i wonder and i'm like eh, who cares like especially yeah. for these movies where i'm like we're over analyzing everything like why did i i don't i don't know but why did i not you know we're getting deep into it these are the kind of things that i start thinking about now when i'm watching the movies like what like what what was the motive there and i wish i could know like i could get like a 45 minute backstory between brian coming you know what i mean like there like there could be like a hairy backstory for me at this point and i'd be like yeah i really want to know what happened in that like in that whole... <laughs> fast and furious presents harry the auto detail <laughs> parts guy <laughs> exactly yeah and I, i'm like really curious about it like if they were like we're releasing a spin-off and it's going to be the backstory of harry and brian i'd be like yeah i'll, I'll watch that you <laughs> know i'll watch that infinity times infinity time that was my tangent on the beginning sorry no i like that no that's good that's good that's good cool sergeant tanner never comes back does he i mean we get bilkins in part two he comes back which was cool i forgot that i I constantly forget he's in part one as well oh actually speaking of part two and speaking of harry every time i see him in this movie and i know it's not him i think he's james remar from the second one because he looks like dexter's dad like when he first comes in like he's like sort of like slumped over on the phone or whatever you can sort of see his like his haircut and he's just sort of like a fairly tall white dude like an older white dude i'm just like oh that's james oh it's not james remar yeah so that's the thing with this series like i get a lot of the sort of older white cops confused like oh, even they all later look the same. yeah they all yeah look the same when that guy in part four is it right from um boardwalk empire and like he's a great character actor but he's been like everything and stuff the guy who brian he breaks his nose i guess in part seven. Oh know, like, yes 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 and, like i thought he was james remar's character at one point but recast i was like what is <laughs> they wouldn't do that would they <laughs> Yeah, they'll just so, write yeah, somebody else in. They don't care. It's still hard. Right, that's what they do, though, is, like, they if they can't get the actor, they just write a character who's exactly like the previous character mm-hmm. so that they have that character in there. And now I think Mr. Nobody just serves that purpose for, like, anyone they can't get back. They just, like, call in that character to be, like... That yeah. for that person. Yeah, I get it. So, oh, I got a, I got a thing about Johnny Tran. Okay. In this movie. Okay. So Johnny Tran is set up to be sort of like this, the ultimate red herring, and like one of yes. the best in movies. Like they are really on this guy's case throughout the whole thing. Like really want you to believe it's him. When I don't know about you guys, but like it was pretty. I mean, not pretty obvious, but it's like it doesn't take long to figure out that it's Dom, right? You just have to understand why is more of the journey well, I also think, like it's it's not just about figuring out it's Dom but it's sort of just like you know Keanu like he knows it's Patrick Swayze but he doesn't want to believe it right like it's like yes you're like in every with the cop crew. tells him every time that like Brian sees like 
They're yeah. like, you know, it's Dom, right? Like, it, it is Dom, and like he's like, no, like I'm, I'm yeah, investigating. In denial. Oh, yeah. and also, this other one other thing I wanted to mention real quick. We were talking before about how we just think we go into the movie thinking Brian's a cop because you go into Point Break and like one of the first things, if not the first thing you see, is Keanu like at Quantico or wherever he is, like the FBI mm-hmm. office, and like he's just there to like learn on the job, right? So like that movie is set up differently in that you know that he's a cop from the beginning. Here. You just think he's just like an outsider trying to get in with the crew, then you find out he's a cop. So I think in that regard, that's another reason why you might think he's just a cop from the beginning, if you know what I mean? Yes. Yeah, I kind of like the way this is set up more. I like I like that they treat it more as a reveal, because I believe that Brian at that point is just a street racer, you know, like they want me to. And I also end up believing that he ends up loving the racing more than being a police officer by the end like, it really feels like that's why he's like so blinded by dom and the lifestyle is like because he really wants to do that like that's his passion well seven so... movies later we figured out that was his passion now mike i've got a, i've got a difficult question for you what do you like okay. more as a movie this or point break and is it i am i think it's still at point break i think there's something about swayze and keanu's chemistry and that romance and the way that that's handled even though i kind of like the structure of this more and this is a little more exciting and i don't know there's just something more i i think it has it comes down to those two it really did as okay. opposed to paul walker and vin diesel like nothing against these two but yeah. it's just something about the other guys had it you know i i felt it a little deeper i get it between brian and dom by like part four and five i think you know it gets there but it's just not there yet i think i think i like point break 2 also more i've, I've seen it more maybe a couple times more maybe uh, i mean that's not gonna be true for very long but they, oh, there's a real quick uh thing on johnny tran though Go ahead, is, sorry. which i thought was interesting so when he first shows up when they pull him over when in um by the confucius statue like in chinatown right like if you've seen this movie before there's all of these literally like these lights going off saying that johnny tran is a red herring what is His it whole, basically like the place that they get pulled over in is like this red chinese sort of architecture okay and then Johnny and his crew are like on red motorcycles with like a couple of them have red helmets. Oh, you're saying literally red herring, like red. Yeah, like they're, they're tr- like his color is the color red, like in this movie. Uh, if you know it, it's yeah, it's it pretty is. cool like that. Yeah, and and throughout, and even when they're walking away, like the the street lights are flashing red and stuff. Oh. And so I was, if you, it's just there. I think like if you've seen it, you know, it's in the background and stuff. It's just a little director's touch of foreshadowing kind of thing like yeah if no, you know what very a red herring is and you picked up on it and you you know interesting. but also that. like this movie doesn't work if he's the villain no like not even a little bit you know what yeah. I mean like it, ha- it has to be Dom yeah yeah Johnny Tran can't be the can't be like then you just live happily ever after like that's the it would just be so anticlimactic I feel like Johnny Tran is into like heavier shit too than hijacking like he seems to be because he's got like guns and weapons like the most dominus crew have is a nos powered grappling hook you know like they don't have guns they don't shoot in this movie it's all johnny tran and his cousin and stuff that do the well they're like yakuza like or, or like whatever the korean yakuza import kind of is they're Korean gangsters. Yeah, so I imagine they're more into, like, drugs and shit yeah, like that. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking, too. I definitely think that they're into drugs and, like, weapons and stuff. Which is a good point, Mike. The cops are going after Dom stealing DVD players, but Johnny Tran's, like, clearly, like, moving weight over here. They're just totally okay with that? Like, well, I, th- I think I think there's just other cops that we're not seeing who's trying to, who are trying to take down Johnny Tran. Like, the cops okay. that we're following. The reason we're being told this story is because we're, we're from the eyes of Brian, who has been brought in to find the DVD players. You know what I mean? And so... Okay. That's fair. I think there's there's got to be other people trying to bring down, you know, the Korean Yakuza, whatever you want to call them. Yeah. But, I mean, there's the scene in the middle here where there's that guy, Ted, sort of that heavier guy, the fence that they're trying to, you know, whatever. Dom, like, the whole backstory is, like, Dom beat the shit out of that guy with a wrench, you know, brought him, beat him with an mm-hmm. inch of his life. Dom yes. you know, explains what happened later. But, like, we don't we don't see that. Like, that's all in his past. Like, for, for all intents and purposes, I mean, he's a thief in this, but he's sort of a changed man. We see in this movie Johnny Tran, like, fill a guy's mouth with, like, gasoline or oil or whatever and, like, yep. beat him up like and, like, kick him. And, like, you know, we see him do worse things in here than Dom does in any movie, aside from the fact that, you know, Dom kills people and, like, you know. But, you know, that's all, like, justifiable, what, whatever, down the stretch. But, <laughs> like, you know. Like, yeah, their cops don't die. I mean, like, they get, like, you know, shot out of the road and stuff. But, like, he doesn't, like, murder them with oil. Yeah, I always get the sense they try later on to let you think that he's killing bad guys or bad cops or, you know, whoever... Dom ends up killing later on 
or deserved it or something. Exactly. I, I'm still trying to figure out why they're hijackers. Is it just for the thrills? Is it for money for race wars? Because it seems like they're banking in on just like the uh, underground circuit and everything. They're like kind of running that whole scene. This is the conversation that um, Mia has with Dom at the end after race wars when he when you only hear the Mia part of it and Brian's watching them and Mia says like don't do it Dom like don't go don't go and I don't I don't think you can even hear what he says but she's like you're not doing this for me you're doing it for you like okay so so like she knows that they're doing it because they can do it and he's telling her that like he's like trying to make sure Mia is taken care of. I feel like it's the kind of thing where like if you're affiliating yourselves with the sort of the CD underbelly, like even if you're if you're just running race wars, you're not committing any crimes other than you know maybe like obstruction of traffic or whatever. You know what I mean? Like like minor yeah. shit. Mm-hmm. But like if you're affiliating yourself in that criminal world or the adjacent to the criminal world, if you see the opportunity for more money and you're like oh shit like we have the means we have we're the, cars. the skills we're we the have s- the skills yeah like we can mm-hmm. do this thing like if you're not opposed to crime i think it's an easy way i feel like that's a lot of movies right like it's it's whatever people are good at that's going to get them a quick buck and here you know they're able to do that maybe they're not making as much money they're not going as hard or as heavy as johnny tran but they have the cars they have the skills they have you know the connections to get rid of the stuff once and they also steal it. it's it's less dangerous right like until it starts to get wild, we come into we come in at a point where like the truck drivers have taken it on their own on themselves and stuff like that. But for the most part, when they were first doing this, from what they lead you to believe, they were just hijacking a truck. They leave the guy outside. They take the truck. Nobody's shooting at them. It's not a big deal, you know. So this is a much like lower risk crime than selling drugs or shooting people and stuff like that. Yeah, or robbing a bank or something. Exactly. Yeah, the risk is all on them because they have to do the car stunts and stuff, and, like, they're not trying to hurt the driver or anything like that. Like, yeah. If anyone gets hurt, it's going to be them, and that is what happens. And and I guess regarding Dom, like, he is a convicted felon, right? So choices are kind of limited for him when it comes to, like, getting a straight job. He has his own I mean, cafe. It's Toretto's cafe. Yeah, but th- that's the thing. Like, he, it's not like he has his own auto parts store or his own... It's like garage, right? He does. Like that's he has the I'm garage, thinking. but it's not like a it's no, not no, like no. A functioning like, garage. No, but Joe, I think like like Mike's point is like because in the middle where they're having that scene after they you know race the Ferrari and they're having the food, like Brian's mm-hmm. whole point, shrimp. he knows what he knows because he's a cop who knows this. But he's like, like you're not buying the parts you buy based on your market job. Like he's like you're not selling groceries to buy these cars, which again, yes, you don't pick up Owen Shaw like his groceries. Shout out later movie but like i think that's the whole thing like mike's right like like dom's to the world dom's source of income is the grocery store like the market and then you know maybe what he wins at race wars doesn't even seem like he races at race wars he just runs it you know what i mean so yeah well he beat brian at race wars right no that's race just like the first street race yeah that's not that oh that's right that's not race well he's supposed to race johnny tram but that doesn't happen, right? Because the other kid ends up, right? Because Johnny Tran's like, I'll see you at Race Wars. Like, I got some shit under this hood. Yeah. He's like, I'll be there. So, like, I figured they were supposed to That was going to be the final showdown, right? Yeah. Yeah, but it got... Jesse. Jesse, yeah. For R.I.P. R.I.P. Jesse. Jesse. Um, but, yeah, because I, it's just, like, they know Dom has, like, a rap sheet. Like, and like you said, all the cops are like, Brian, arrest Dom already. What are you waiting for? We know it's him and everything like this. So, it just seems like an excessive risk, but... It, you know, again, if he's doing it for family, for Mia to put her through school so that eventually if they have kids, like, on their, you know, with their respective yeah. husband or wife or thing, you know, like, to take care of it down the line, I could understand, like, he wants a nest egg or something like that. You know, now that it, that you know it's all about family, that's good enough for me, really. Fair. Fair. I get it. It's kind of cool, though, actually, also that they're very coy about it, that you could piece it together but they're not coming straight out because what that you can put together why like his motive his motivations what he's doing it for all this yeah there's not like when there's not like a breaking bad style goal where he's like mia has cancer and we're gonna like get rid of her cancer it's it's more of like a he's doing it just for her family you know like for all of them so that they're okay 
and he's just taking care of them in this like high level superficial kind of way although if you listen to like, walter white he was also doing it for his family so is that really the best comparison that's that's what i'm saying no but it's a there's not like one main goal it's like do this right, to right, get right. this it's it's like a you know one thing i noticed this time around which you know it's it's a it's a major thing and we've talked about it in past laps about how brian can even in this movie is being doubted for using nas too soon and like not good at using nas yes but like it really I never really thought about the impact, sort of, of Dom, uh, of Brian relying on a computer for when to Nas, as opposed to relying on his instincts. Because mm. um, I didn't notice that either. He's I good enough he of a racer computer, that he gets though. this gig, right? That the cops are like, you can go undercover because we know that you're going to be able to, more likely than, you know, any of us old white guys or whatever, to, yeah. to pull this off. But he's still, you know, not comfortable enough in his abilities in his instincts to like know when to nas he like has that computer it's like stage one complete and that's when he hits the nas and the computer no no that's just the initiator he's not but but still i still feel like he's using like it's just he's timing everything he's trying to like instead of racing with his instincts he's true Yeah. yeah fair yeah it reminds me sort of like Luke, where he's like, turn off the computer, use the force, you know? Like, Brian hasn't quite learned to use his racing instincts yet. And True. Stuff. But that brings me to something I love about these movies, which is going to get more and more elaborate to the point of God's eye. But the tech, like, we get a little introduction of, like, and this is, like, real world kind of shit, though. But, like, people do have, like, little laptops in their cars mm-hmm. and run shit like that and stuff. And, like, I loved the guy playing Gran Turismo in his own that car was so and stuff. Cool. Like, I agree. It reminded me of the show Exhibit used to have on MTV where he would pimp your ride. Pimp my and, ride. <laughs> I remember this show. So, like, I thought that was cool. Like, it, even in the next movie where they have those sort of shock darts that they shoot at the cars and stuff that dismantle the engines mm-hmm. and stuff. Like, well, actually, there's... It, just as a real quick t- detour, mm-hmm. sorry to interrupt you. There's, like, a... When, when, they, when they jack the truck at the beginning of this movie, they hit the driver with something that looks like one of those shock darts. And I was like, huh. Mm-hmm. And so I don't know if that's the same thing or if it's a different thing, but that, that, that caught me off guard this time. Yeah, interesting. So it's kind of... It's kind of cool. Like, they're taking this stuff that's, like, part of the real racing world, where it's, like, computers hooked up to your... Like, you're running your car on a computer kind of thing, and, like, they're going to really build off that to say, like, well, if you can run your car on a computer, maybe what if you can operate a thousand cars and drive them all around New York from a computer? You know, like, we're going to get there. So Yeah. Um, it's cool that it's just, like, the germ or, like, the seed. That's the... This is the beginning of God's Eye. You're right. Does Vince have a Zelda tattoo? I've been trying to figure this out for years. Oh, I I don't know. I gotta. We gotta it kind of looks like lap. those. What are they like? The Nazca lines or something like that. Also, mm-hmm. but he's got like this upside down four part triangle kind of thing. It looks like a triforce of power. And I just every time I watch this movie, I'm like, on is which that arm is it? The thing? eagle one, the one with like the eagle. Yeah. yeah, the I think it's his left arm. I don't know. Let me take a look at this. Well, that also makes me wonder is if that's a tattoo that they put on Vince, which I feel like if that was the case, they would have drawn more attention to it, or if that's just a, a tattoo that the actor has, because uh, in un- completely unrelated to this this franchise, but I was watching, uh, I talked about this on the Relap Recap, I watched After Everything, which is a Micah Monroe movie, and the kid who plays Lip on Shameless is in there. On Shameless, he has this tattoo, like this like triangle over his heart, and I was like, oh, that's weird, but then in this movie, he has it too, so like, that's clearly just the actor who has the tattoo, you know what I mean? So oh, maybe yes. the actor who plays... Vince has that tattoo. I don't know. It, it, it is. Um, I'm I'm looking up pictures of it, and he has it like on the beach and other things. So he just has this tattoo. I don't know what it is or what it's for. I think he has more by part five too on his other arm. Like his sleeve goes all the way down his arm. But I love, I love this guy. Like he is because he's in love with Dom, right? Like that's a thing, right? <laughs> yeah. Like he love he wants Dom. Like he's jealous of everybody and everything that gets to spend time with Dom, except for him and like. But he's also wants... the only one that knows. He... Dom I doesn't know. believe him, <laughs> and he's the only one that's right that Brian's a cop, like from the jump. He's like that, Dom. I'm telling amazing. you, like you've known me forever. This guy's crooked, and Dom's like, nah, it's okay. And I feel yeah, like that's, that's you know that's com- amazing. comparing it to Point Break. I feel like you know where Point Break sort of excels is in showing that not necessarily I mean it is homoeroticism but like the the love that they have for one another like I feel like here you know we were saying a little bit earlier like I don't feel like you feel the love between them as much as you do in later movies you know what I mean and again yeah it might yeah. just be in later movies because we know the characters better. I don't know if it's in later movies because it's, it's more articulated. Like, there's the, the storyline of Point Break where Keanu and Lori Petty have a relationship, but, like, that's just, like, a that's like a, that's a smokescreen. Like, it's... The, the real love is between right. Keanu and Patrick Swayze, and, like, that is, you know, undeniable from the beginning, so... 
yeah. Like there's it's cool because there's there's enough here that when he comes back in a later movie, you recognize him and he you know, you understand like what he's all about whereas if I feel like Leon doesn't really he's not he does, as much as I love him, like I really don't feel like they built him out as a character to the point no. where if he came back as much as I want him back, if he did come back, it would take half the movie for the audience to be like who is that again yeah what is that maybe he's got to yell at a pizza guy for everyone to remember who he was unfortunately (laughs) yeah one of the best moments of the franchise that's just a unbelievable to me it's just when they walk into dom's house and it's like they're living in a beer commercial and, (laughs) and like the music's playing and fucking vince is playing guitar along to like a recorded music thing I was just like I lose my mind every time <laughs> about that part just like what a party scene yeah it's just amazing I like that the music is like the perfect volume for background like ambiance but also not too loud like you think these guys are listening to really quiet music in this party like no it would just be like just m- death metal or something like blaring and it's like no it's just like really soft music and everybody can hear each other and they can like talk across the room and that 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 was something that i noticed this time too i mean i get that i get that that's a movie thing but it was just also really funny to me there's a line in that scene that i never caught before at least i never wrote down before it's when jesse's making out with that girl and dom looks and says yo take it upstairs you can't detail a car with the hood on and it's like really you didn't catch that i think isa talked (laughs) about it last time we watched this Island, I think I caught a lot of things that were objectifying of women that I never necessarily... Because yes. there's so much going on. Like, I've only seen this first movie. Again, this is now maybe the ah, fourth or fifth time. Fair. You're right. Yeah, so, good point. There's a, there's a lot happening in all these scenes, which is why the Fast and Furious Minute coming next year sometime to this feed <laughs> is going to be so much fun. Is this like the least family moment, if there was? The idea that his entire crew just was either waiting for him to walk in the door on his own or get a call from the police station or something? Like, yeah, they're having they, a party when like Dom is they, either they, dead or arrested, right? Yeah. No, like, I that think... always rubs me a little... A little, I mean, it I don't know. It is weird, but if you think about it from the perspective, like, they're street racers. They definitely have to break up together. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm sure that they've, they've had street races broken up before. And the plan's right, always right. like, okay, meet us back at the house, at the fort. I see. And you'll be there. So I think that they're just like, oh, Dom's, like, on his way back somehow. You know, who knows what happened. But, like, he, he's, he's probably on his way back. And so they're just, like, waiting around. And then they were partying because they won the street race, obviously, like he did. So that's what it was. And it's, yeah. it would actually be worse for them to, like, go back out in their cars to, like, look for him because then they're going to get arrested. So, like, as much as it, they should have probably gotten him, it's not, like, that egregious to me. Also, I one thing I want to point out about that. the scene that we, we made note of, I think, in the, what? Of the episode of You Are My Lifespan is that they do call it the fort, which I'd never heard before. I didn't remember. And so when uh, Lunar She-Wolf writes about the fort, that they didn't go back to the fort or whatever. I was like, what? Oh, I but totally here, remembered this, though. They call I, it the fort. Yeah, I knew she had nailed it. She She's definitely seen the first one quite a few times. Like She, she uses a lot of the, of the simple parlance that they use when they're talking about stuff. And yeah. I was like, this is why actually I picked that fan fiction because i was like this it's a good choice it yeah like she more knows and more clear each time that it's a good choice yeah joe too don't you think that they have like some decoy cars like some real pieces of crap or like just some like modern you know what they car are that they go get groceries with that they could go they like, do search cars and you know what it is it's the fucking three honda civics that are black which also <laughs> they're on the lookout for which they keep at the planetarium or something like where did they, the observatory like where know. do they stash those cars i don't know but i think that if they did take a car out because that's the least conspicuous of their cars right is the the civics so if they would have taken the civics out but the the whole police force is looking for the civics because they've been robbing trucks so their normal like getaway kind of cars are now blown up and also i think they might not have engines in them right now or something remember because they were like doing upgrades or whatever speaking of not having engines in them did you guys pick up on the shot where it's right before dom brings brian to his garage to introduce him to his dad's car they're fixing up the car in their garage and dom is sitting where the engine's supposed to be he's literally like the engine of the car it's no i didn't see this at all but that's a (laughs) really interesting he's talking to brian and he's sitting where the engines would be in the hood it's uh, i thought it was the funniest thing yeah i wonder if that 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 had to be intentional to be like dom's the engine of this right like 
It can't be it's that. The first tongue time I picked up on it. I've never. I didn't. I never connected it. You see a lot of crazy stuff that I never pick up. Like there's a line, another line that I caught this time that I never caught before. I, th- I just had no notes for this entire scene, but it's a scene. It's one of the many scenes where the other cops are yelling at Brian like, "It's Dom, it's Dom, it's Dom." But that old cop is just like he's talking about uh, with Mia and how he gets off on her surveillance photos too, and like Brian loses his shit. I'm just like, like that's so like Creepy. have a little bit of respect, you know what I mean? Like for your position, for you know for because Mia's not the target. women like Mia in general yeah, just for for women in general. But like Mia's not the target. Like I could see like if you're you know talking shit about Dom because he's the criminal, but she's just tangentially involved and for. For what we can see, like she's maybe involved, but like they're they're going after Dom. They're not going after her. So yeah, yeah, and also that's why do you that's getting a rise out of Brian. Yeah, like, I think that's probably weird. why he said it though, right? Like because he just wanted to no, piss Brian right, off. Right, but I mean they're supposed to be on the case together, like that too. He's testing really Brian's loyalty to the police force or Mia yeah. is what he was doing. There is how go. he is how he, why he said it. I love the um the the glowing under their cars, like the green and stuff. I miss it reminds that, me. Man. Um, did you guys ever see or remember Tommy's Tubes? No. By any chance, does that ring a bell? No, no. Oh, you got to look these commercials up. I think they're on YouTube. But as a kid, like, there were these neon tubes you could get that would fit under any car. And <laughs> you could drive around like that. Like, like you're Was it a before badass. or after the Fast and the Furious? Oh. oh, it was way before. This was, I remember this from, like, the early 90s. Like, Tommy's Tubes and stuff and all different colors. And No, that would be awesome. I wish they would bring this back in cars. I would like to have have like if i if i were to get a tuner now i would want it to be 90s nostalgia tuner with like you know playstation 2 in the dash and running lights underneath and stuff like that like that's what i would actually want from it so it would fit like into the original fastiverse like it would just yeah. come right out of there i think i i think i've run through most if not all of the my new lap observations essentially but same like i know this is you know we've talked about this movie twice already i know that this is new for you this time around so uh, before we move on and do a couple of our games that we're going to play, anything else that you want to mention? Because we always, you know, you're going to be here for the next seven episodes, so there's plenty more to talk right. about the characters and stuff. But anything yeah, else about yeah. the movie uh, in particular that you want to cover before we, you know, do some of the games that are on the show? The last thing I want to mention, just in general, is I really love the way this movie looks. Like I wanted to mention it a little earlier when I brought up the Ultra HD thing okay. and stuff, but I just think in general, like it looks like Michael Bay, but it's not cut like a Michael Bay film, right? Like the editing is yeah. like a normal person editing, okay. not not someone on like a pound of sugar or something. <laughs> like, I just think it's really a well shot and good looking movie. And like, I, the first one or two times, like, like the, the CGI part in the race kind of bothered me, but now I really love it because it just gets you into their head even deeper. What were the cars yeah. like, like race by you like real quick? Warp speed, yeah. yeah. I really liked that. And then I just think, like, just the one part that stuck out to me this time as, like, just completely ridiculous and out of control, but but also entirely amazing, is when they're first lining up for that first street race. Go ahead. It feels like it's, like, 15 minutes for them to, like, line up all their cars. I mean, it only takes, like, two at the most, but it is just, you know, that's when Leon tells the pizza boy to go screw off and everything but like i love watching the cars drive down the street line up and get ready for the race like that was just so full of energy and excitement this time i was like wow they don't even really need to race (laughs) yeah i could just watch these cars like park and i'm cool like right now but we actually get a a really awesome race so they set up the race really well the last last thing that i had in my notes that and i'm glad you brought up to this part was before when they go to line up the cars two people run across and draw a red line on the ground but if you look they're like on a street that already has a white line across the entire ground so they just draw a red line on the ground right in front of the white line and they're like crooked lines because they're not made by the city so like there is a natural like white line that they could have all lined up on but they choose to draw their own boundary that's crooked hey man It was so strange in the movie. I was like, I like the idea of them, like, running across and drawing it, but they also did it on a street, and the street that they had already had a line, so it was like, what the fuck were you guys thinking? But, okay. Any other thoughts, Mike, or are you you ready for some uh, some trivia? Yeah, I'm I'm ready for some trivia. I think we did pretty well for this first episode. And we gave another couple perspectives that we hadn't talked about yet either, so good for us. Paul Walker and Matt Scholes, who plays Vince, carefully choreographed the fight scene outside the grocery store, but when it came time to shoot, it didn't feel right, so they just improvised it, which 
feels mm, natural. Like it also sense. feels mm. like I think that's also what adds to it feeling kind of like more like a lower budget movie. Like if it was more theatrical, more planned, more choreographed, I think it would have given more. It would have felt more produced in a way. You know what I mean? Not that it's better like the or later worse. Ones. I agree. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I think th- I think the Limp Biscuit really helps sell that. I don't oh know if it's God. Limp Biscuit, but like yes. the music in this movie, I feel it's just well directed. There's so that. much like, music in this movie. Like I'm like, oh fuck, I forgot that there's like Ludacris has a song in this movie. And then I'm like, oh, there's Limp Biscuit. It's like it's all over the place and it's awesome and there's a ton of it. And we might have talked about it, but like Ludacris has a song in this movie and then Ludacris is an actor as a character in a future movie. You know what I mean? Like it's a And weird... also has a song in that movie too. Yeah. So what if Tej in a previous life went by Ludacris as like a non de plume mm. or something. And like mm. that was his rap name and his street name is Tej. I don't know, I'm just spitball. I'm into it. Yeah. I want I want to connect everything. I want you know? to too. I do. Neither Michelle Rodriguez nor Jordana Brewster had driver's licenses or even learner's permits before production of the film. So that's whoa surprising. This that's is actually a really interesting cool. fact, yeah. Uh, filmmakers asked owners of houses and backgrounds. This I don't know this is crazy, but asked owners of houses and backgrounds to repaint their houses with more muted colors to show off the colorful cars, which is not something I noticed, but it's something you can definitely, you know, pick up on that like the now colors that I know really it. pop because the background is so sort of drab. Yeah, that's I wonder how much they paid. So here here's where, you know, again, what could have been, right? So in terms of recasting, Ooh. in terms of actors who almost were. Okay. So for Paul Walker, before for the Brian O'Connor part, Mark Wahlberg Christian oh, Bale, Italian job, and oh, Eminem were Whoa. considered Whoa. for the part Nothing. of Brian O'Connor. Eminem I mean, would not have worked at all. No way. No, the movie would have been one and done. It would not have been a Christian franchise. Bale would have been way serious. He's done some goofy stuff, I think, but you know, he's he's. I don't know that they were. I don't think he would have stuck around. I think he would have gotten exactly. It felt like by the yeah, end of yeah. you know, the Batman trilogy, he was just like, I'm done with these. You know what I mean? So that's the thing. I think it took a high profile. Like you had to do Batman for to get Christian Bale to you know, do it more than once, right? Like, yeah. that's how I feel. Uh, Joe, we talked about on our I Am Paul Walker episode that he didn't want to be Superman for, like, a decade, but he wound up being P- Brian O'Connor for, like, the last 15 years of his life, right? So, yeah. This was, knows, like, a big thing. I don't know if Mike knows that, but, like, one of the things was is Paul Walker was going to be Superman at one point, and he, like, backed out pretty much, like, as he was driving to taping, like, the first taping, oh. and they, like, asked him, like, his agent was like, why? And he's like, I just can't see myself being Superman for, like, a decade. Like, yeah. that would be, like, the wow. worst thing for me. And then he becomes Brian O'Connor for, like, forever. Like, as much as I love Jason Momoa's Aquaman, Brian O'Connor in the first Fast and Furious looks exactly like the comic book Aquaman character. Like, he was yes. great, yeah. you know, early 2000s Aquaman if they tried to do like that movie or something. Well, you know who yeah. I really wanted? It's not Aquaman, but it's the Hunger Games version of Aquaman of uh, Finnick O'Dare. I really wanted Zeph. Like, I thought Zeph would have been, like, after reading those books, and, like, he's oh, sort of the, yeah. you know, the trident from the water district in Hunger Games, but, you know, they went with somebody else, but he was good in those movies, but I, th- I really think Zeph would have been a good choice there. Anyway, okay. So I, I think what's funny about these trivia things is that they're new to us, but to, you know, our most dedicated listeners, I'm sure that Wes knew all this stuff, I'm sure know Cassie knows all this stuff. Uh, so the role of Mia was written for Eliza Dushku, but she turned it down. Who's that? Oh, she's mostly a um, TV actress, I think. Right? She was in Buffy. Spell her name. Seasons, bring it on. She's the she's other bring it on. Bring it on. Eliza Eliza Dushku. D U S H K U. She was in Dollhouse. Jane Silent Bob Strike oh, Back. Oh yeah, bring she's it really on. cute. She would. I think she'd be a good Mia. Yeah, she's a good actor too. So yeah. she said. Mia has she said something no. else to her though. I don't know. There's some kind of like elegance or grace that you don't really expect from the street racing world that she brings like i feel like she would be just as comfortable in an evening gown as she were you know True. in her jeans and the t-shirt or something whereas i don't know if letty would put a dress on or anything. ever no but also for the role of mia people who auditioned for it were natalie portman whoa whoa blonde natalie portman also it's weird that she's listed whoa. her twice i don't know uh <laughs> check out boyfriend material for that joke sarah michelle geller talking about Buffy, Chris, okay. Kirsten Dunst, Bijou Phillips, and Jessica Biel of Seventh Heaven and such. So, hmm. oh, Wow. I think some of those could have worked, but again, you know, we like Jordana Brewster. Exactly. It's hard to watch these and think about changing the people in them. That's really hard. So Rob Cohen, who directed the movie, wanted originally to reunite Saved by the Bell and cast Mario Lopez as Dom, Mark Paul Gossler as Brian, and oh, Dustin God. Diamond as Jesse. But they Get thought that reunite. This is again on IMDb. Who knows if this is true? But the uh, studio executives thought that reteaming the characters would confuse audiences, which 
yeah, absolutely. Why would you do that? But so <laughs> they, they brought in the it, other guys, the guys who we you obviously got. Like you're not gonna get Mario Lopez, who's been on what like daytime TV for the last like 20 years. No one's getting bail screech out of jail. Like Mark Paul Gosler, maybe. I mean, like he's okay. I could see him maybe, but like <laughs> get out of town with that trivia. <laughs> yeah, I, that's a wacky one. Because I think Keep I remember driving. from I am Paul Walker that they were saying like he specifically wanted Paul Walker to do it for some reason or something. So well, he had been he had he had I think the he skulls, didn't he direct right? the skulls yeah yeah exactly yeah. and I think that he said like he like specifically like wrote the role with them for Paul Walker right like wasn't that like part of the deal so I don't no, know how man. much I believe that trivia but again you know it's IMDb we always take these sort of as gospel but it's always you yeah know, who knows there's one big one that I want to so this originally was shot uh, it was received an R rating for the MPAA but apparently all they had to do is cut out some gruesome bloody shots of Vince's arm at the end. So that really, it? that's apparently that's what this says. Oh, interesting. do you actually see Jesse get shot in this? You, he, do, you like, see him take a bullet, but he doesn't really bleed. Okay, okay. Because I figured that I'm just I saw it was PG-13, and I didn't really because they're all PG-13. Catch the F word. No. Yeah. And that's the I thing you know right. we pointed out last last time around is you know who gets the fuck. So yeah. And even the sex scenes are very truncated. Like you guys mentioned earlier, they're kind of not even in the series at all. But like we never we see like Mia and Brian start, and then like he gets the phone call in the middle of the night, and they're like sleeping, and then we see Dom and Letty start, but we never see yeah you know anything more than like one or two kisses or something. Yeah, it's they're really mellowed out. Yeah, I agree. Paul Walker said that he wanted to do this film because of the movie Donnie Brasco. I'm thinking the role really? of undercover cop was a cool idea. He wanted to portray that type of character. Dude, I hey, love Donnie Brasco. I love Donnie Brasco. It's like one of my favorite gangster movies. It's like always a slept on one too. Never gets talked about in the big in the big leagues. So good on Paul Walker. And the last thing, I think, what I think might be the coolest in terms of what we're interested in. At the house party, Dom says to Brian, you can have any beer you want as long as it's a Corona. This is likely a reference to automobile innovator Henry Ford. Although we probably never oh. said... You can have any color you want as long as it's black. And although the Model T he was supposedly referring to was made in several colors, ah. the phrase has long been attributed to him. The Model T was not available in black during its first years of production. But I like that there's, That's you know, awesome. not that there, but again, cars, a, a long line of history of cars and everything like that, and like, yeah. you know, paying paying homage to a great car innovator in the past. But yeah. Yeah, that was I really love cool. that. That's trivia that adds depth and history to the character of Dom, you know, that he has studied cars, yeah. like, yeah. through and through, to the, he's probably read that biography of Henry Ford or something. <laughs> Alright, Mike, it is now time. It's that time of the show. This is the last time we're ever going to do this one, Mike. We're going to find really? out which Fast and Furious character are you? Because starting next Ooh. episode, you're going to be our guinea pig. We are going to have our quiz. The Lou and Two oh, version. Sweet. The Lou and Two version. But this is the last time we're doing the awesome. Zimbio quiz. We found out today that Wes got Letty. We've gotten I think we've gotten all the characters, all six of them. Roman, 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 Roman. Roman, Roman, here we go. <laughs> first things first, Mike, how fast do you like to go? NASCAR, roller coaster, or Vespa? Roller coaster. That's second thing second, how furious are you? Hulk? Sam Kinnison, Furious Styles. Um, and again, I'll say I'll say to you, I know you've heard it by listening to episodes, but you can ask questions. We do not have the answers. We don't know what most of this means. We only recently found out because of Austin that Sam Kinison is a you know misogynistic comedian. But yeah, you know. I'm, I'm, I remember him from the '80s. Uh, I remember. Mm. I knew. Fu- I've seen Boys in the Hood. I'm, I'm unfortunately, I must say, I'm a Hulk. I fucking Hulk out from time to time. Really? And I'm not okay. proud of it. Yeah, I try to conceal it as much as possible. But well, you like, do a good I, job, Mike, because I've never seen it. Thanks, Mike. Um, who would you risk your life for? Family, friends, anyone, or no one? I want to say family, but that's because I include friends and family. You know, oh, like my sure. friends are well, my I mean, family. Yeah, so, yeah. so the friends Part and family, family. choose. So family, I'll do. I'll do family. Yeah. Choose a one-liner. Why don't you just pack it up before I leave tread marks on your face? I'm a boy who appreciates a good body regardless of the make. When are you gonna give Martin Luther King his car back? He's like gravity. Everything just gets pulled to him. There's never nothing. There's always something. Ride or die. I got a ride or die. Ride, or, Ride die. or die. Mike, someone that you have a crush on is standing over there. What will mm. you do? Nothing. Let them come to me. I'm going over there. Stand here and stare at them. I'm out of here. I think I'm going to let them come over to me. Ooh. Okay. Saucy think, boy. You know, I like it. That, see if that happens. All right, Mike, this is the first visual component. Put in the picture in uh, the chat. 
Choose Your Ride, 2010 Alfa Romeo Giulietta, 2009 Dodge Challenger SRT8, Plymouth Roadrunner, Gurkha LAPV, 2010 Koenigsegg CCXR. All right, beep, beep, I'm going with the Roadrunner. I, don't, I was that actually just thinking, I don't nice. think anybody's ever picked the Roadrunner. I don't think. Yeah. Really, that thing is like some 70s Plymouth action right it there, is. it looks like. I like that. And it's got like copper. That is ugly. I love it. Yeah. Mike, which of these opposites do you tend towards, positive or negative? <laughs> Oh, that's the, that's it. <laughs> that's the question. Yeah, um, you know, as I, I always try to stay positive. Okay, it's it's hard as it is, but yeah, you Hulk so out, but stay positive about it. Mike, how do yeah. you feel about lying? I'm a big liar. I lie sometimes, no big deal. If I do lie, I feel bad about it forever. Call me honest, Abe. You know, I I do my best, but if I lie about it, I, I feel bad about it forever. Okay, Mike, how do you say goodbye to someone you love? And Joe, I'm the, I'm gonna miss this question more than <laughs> any other question. <laughs> Remember this them every favorite. day. Turn your back and walk away. Walk away. Pour your forty out. You don't. I mean, I gotta just. I pour that. I pour out the forty. All right. Just okay. Pour the forty out. Just one for me, one for them. All right, Mike. Here's the second visual component to this quiz. Joe, I'm so glad we're not going to do the visual component anymore. <laughs> Same. <laughs> Choose an action hero. John Kimball from Kindergarten Cop. Wrong picture. John Matrix from Commando. James Carter from Rush Hour. Nikita from La Femme Nikita. John Rambo from the Rambo series. Or Hercules in the Rock era Hercules. Uh, I can't believe there's two Arnolds up here. I would love to be, I would love to go with the Rock, but I, I mean, he's always been there. I gotta go with John Rambo. Mm. I'm totally, I mean, I'm that lame. I'm so Rambo. <laughs> What's your favorite article of clothing? My dark jeans, my favorite wife beater, my too tight t-shirt, my old sneakers, my leather jacket. No Von Dutch t-shirt, huh? No. no. Um, my old sneakers, right. for sure. I was used to be a sneakerhead, so. That's true, Mike, yeah. it's our anniversary. Where are we going? What are we doing? Candlelit <laughs> dinner for two somewhere dark. Let's just go somewhere dark. Let's drive. Let's, let's, let's go, let's drive. Let's drive, yeah. okay. Let's drive. let's drive. Let's just drive. And then, Mike, the final question, the final visual component. If you were to have your photo taken, what would the background be? Desert, blue sky, garage, city lights, and explosion. Let's see. Um... I'm I'm really liking the uh, the city lights there. Let's go with the city lights. Now, Joe, do you have any do you have any guesses on who Mr. Mike Manzi is? I'm guessing Roman Pierce. He is someone that Austin Wolf Southern was. He's also who I am. He's also who Rachel is. Mike, you are Brian O'Connor. Wow. Fearless and reckless with a blind spot when it comes to the opposite sex. You're cool under pressure. You welcome it actually and respond to a fast lifestyle that keeps you on the move. You love gambling. You'll stand up for what you believe in. And, Joe, you know it. You drive, you like, drive the like the wind blows. Drive like the wind blows. Yeah. I'll take it. So, yeah, Brian. Mike. I didn't expect you to get Brian. But the that's cool. final time we are ever going to do that Zimbio quiz, unless our quiz fails miserably, which I don't hope Can it does. Can we keep but... the turn your back and walk away, remember them every day, pour your 40 out, don't? We, we could keep, keep it, that? but, you know. <laughs> we, we, well, that phrase should just be how you close the show from now on. But I do <laughs> want to say, like, all of our, you know, we, we, we have eight questions so far. We want to do 12, four more. I want to have 12 questions. But each that of works. our things has six answers. So, you know, there's not, okay. like, just the either ors. There's there's six for each of these. So, Mike, I'm Is excited. Is this going to be for... different than do you want to drive a car out of an airplane? Yes. Or drive this a car is, this is like a, This is a personality <laughs> quiz. Yeah. Okay. That, that's, that's, a, that's an either or that we'll get episode. to, you know, down the line, six, movie yeah. six or seven for you. But... Yeah, this is the personality quiz in place of the Zimbio. We've got we're making our questions. own a better yep. one with more characters. Yeah, and better questions. So now we've got two games left. Joe, what do you want to do first? You want to do car picks, or you want to do this ain't no ten second race? Oh, we always do car picks and then ain't no ten second okay. race, right? So let's do car yeah. picks. We got two of them. Cool. All right, Mike. Mike, do you want to try to guess with Joe, or do you, or do you want to know the pictures and then help me give clues? I think since I'm going to be on a couple of these, that uh, I'll I'll be I'll be with. Joe won this time. I'll help you give some clues. Okay. That's all right. Thank you. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to text these this. pictures to you, okay, Mike? Okay. So check your phone. Hang on. This first one has three, okay? Three pictures. Whoa. Three pictures. Right. It's just three okay. different shots of it, I think, or Yeah, something. I'm sure. We'll find out. So now, Joe, this is from our mystery person. Okay. Okay. Yeah. The right. country of origin mm-hmm. is... Uh, Japan. Okay. And I'm pretty... I'm almost... I'm almost positive. Let me just... Uh, yes. It is, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 
Uh, so, the, so two of the pictures. So, okay. So, Mike, uh, of the three that I texted you, the first one is from Google, but the other two are the person sent in. But it's the same car. Okay. 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 Uh, so, Joe, it's white. Thanks. Uh, it's yeah. a two-door hatchback. Okay. Uh, the person writes in and says his car could be characterized as quote filthy white. Uh, he writes white. that it goes zero to sixty in sixty seconds. He says, "I don't know if this is actually true, but he always said it." Does not have power steering. It's very reliable. So reliable that he was able to drive it with the engine light on for a year and a half. Ooh. <laughs> uh, and this person gives me a, a car that it looks very similar to. Um, and then there's also a little bit more that I will get into. But in terms of this, it kind of looks if you took like a, a, a longer car and kind of smushed it a little bit. Okay. It's got a longer front end. It looks like the front ends kind of sticks out more and the back. It's got a fat ass or something. Yeah. Know. Okay. You could trick it out, I bet. So, okay, so there's, is on the it... front, there are, Go there's ahead. a headlight on both sides, there's a fog light to, to the outer side, there's kind of like a protruding front bumper. Uh, this is, yeah, no offense to the person who sent it in, I, I think, you know, he mentioned that the car, the color is filthy white. This might be the ugliest car that we've had on this game, you know, it's, it's the definitely the car. least flashy. It's not an ugly okay. car, but it's just in compared to, you know, we've had some pretty... Uh, pr- it pretty, sounds, pretty cars. Is it boxy? Is it boxy? The side... So from the front, it does not look boxy, but from the side and from the rear, it's definitely boxier. Okay. There's real flat rims on it, too, right? I'd say... Yeah. I don't know if that really helps. That might be a, that might be a color, color is hint. It, is it a Toyota? No. It's not a Toyota. Uh, if you want... If, if you if you get stumped, I can Ooh. give you a car that is it looks it, pretty much identical to. Is it, is it a Subaru? No. Hmm. Did you mention that black stripe on There's it. a black stripe on the side. Yes. Good good point, Mike. There's a black stripe on the side. There's also a sticker on the windshield in the first one if that helps. Yeah, that most definitely. Uh-huh. Um, uh no hood scoops, no no sort of flare at all. Okay. Is it a Honda? No. Not a Honda. Mazda? No. Is it an Acura? I would say no. I would say this is a manufacturer probably best known for something other than cars. Another vehicle. I'll give you a hint there. A Mitsubishi. No. Vehicle other than cars. Yep. But it's Japanese. Yes. And I also don't know if I knew that this company made cars. Interesting. So it's not like one of the big Japanese car makers. Like, I'm texting you the the type of car it is. I don't know if you know. Uh, No, it's not a... It's (laughs) it's a big name. But again, I don't know that I knew that they made cars. Like... Sony. No, but you got the right, like the right letter, right? You're getting, but like, think, yeah, think like yes. that. Yes. Like, Not Sony. I got a letter right. You got the first letter right, too. Saturn? No. Nope. Um, like, they also manufacture other goods. Not Subaru. Machines. Samsung? Nope. Fuck is, um, um, let me see. So, okay, so here's a hint. You're not, this is not going to help you at all, but this email... He's from our guest on the episode 7, Furious 7, Austin Wolf Southern. Uh, this is his old car. And I don't know if you remember, but he talked about it. You know, he oh, said yeah. he doubts that you would remember, but just to be safe, what maybe keep him anonymous till after. This is the car no, that he and his girlfriend no. watched the Fast and Furious and Fast and Furious in at the drive-in. Oh, fuck. What was He says it? he forgot. He can't believe he forgot to mention this as part of the story. But the very last thing this car ever did was take us to see the Fate of the Furious before we said goodbye to it. He says it looks identical, pretty much identical to a Geo Metro. Does that help at all? It kind of does look like it. It looks like a Geo Metro, and it's a car... No, I don't... I can't think of it. It's a 2001 Suzuki Swift. Oh, Suzuki. Fuck. Like, Suzuki, I think, you know, makes, you know, motorcycles, yeah, and they, they make, you know, making, they power tools. Yeah, they stopped making cars yeah. in America. They did. Let me see the pictures of this. That's really cool. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah! It looks just like a Geo Metro. Mm-hmm. This thing is really cool. Yeah, I, I, a lot of these car makers used to do this thing where like they would all make the same car and just call it different things. So I, I wouldn't be surprised if this somehow was a Geo Metro. But that's really, really cool. Uh, Suzuki definitely stopped making cars, so I haven't thought about them in forever. What a fucking throwback! You guys are tough. Um, those are some good clues, though. I wouldn't say this is boxy. It's a hard game. Yeah, it's it's more way more rounded. I am though getting better at giving clues. You're, you're way better helping. at it. You're way better at it. You are a thousand percent. I agree. Also, just I uh, want to point out that friend of the show, Melissa Lynham, just texted me uh, a screenshot. Uh, she and her boyfriend Casey are watching Fate of the Furious right now Ooh. on TV. Good for them. Thanks, Melissa. I'm glad that you're watching. It's, uh, it's a picture, and the closed caption says. Uh, you just found out Letty was alive. You can see the baby Brian hand 
up in Dom's face. So there we go. Okay. Second and final car picture of the episode from Wes Hampton. Again, he said that this okay. was not necessarily easier than the last one, which stumped you truly hard. Yeah. Hard. Stumped you hard. Let me save these pictures and send these to Mike. Hang on. There's two. There's one from the front, one from the back. This actually looks like it's parked at the Alamo Draft House parking lot. If that if that helps you at all. That definitely helps. Thanks. I mean, it helps in, in knowing that it is a uh, it, it's a car that you can find in the wild. Yeah, that's um, true. So Fair. there's the pictures, Mike, and this. I'll, I'll get the. Uh, oh, this is uh, Joe. Good, good, I'm just gonna say here. Uh, good luck. I feel like. Um, okay. I feel like uh, Wes is just fucking with you now, but okay. Okay, that's fine. I'll guess. I'll play. He said this one is pretty niche, but he's sending it because he saw it in real life, which I feel like this could be like you know it's it's in a parking deck. It looks like an Alamo draft house. Oh. Okay. Actually, yes. So this is how many times I went to the draft house. He says he found it at the South Lamar draft house. I was like, and in my head, I was like, it looks like that parking lot. So yeah, you were dead on. I, when when you said he saw it in the wild, I was gonna be like, oh yeah, you. Yeah. Probably so these right. are some pretty poor quality pictures I took with my phone while walking through the parking garage next to the Alamo draft house, South Lamar. So uh, again, I've been there. I've spent so much of my life there. You know, I don't even live in Austin, but uh, I saw it from the other end of the row and said to my wife and our friends, "Whoa, what is that monster down there?" No one else even noticed it until we were almost on top of it, but I guess having these movies in mind constantly has put me more on alert for interesting cars. He said initially he thought it was a custom job or a very modded import, but his wife looked it up and found a whole bunch of info about it, including the fact that it was used in one of the movies, I won't say which one yet, and he didn't even realize it. So here are some facts, okay? Okay. It's American. Pricing starts at $99,000. (laughs) <laughs> Upon okay. purchase, the buyer goes to one of the manufacturer's micro factories and helps assemble the car along with a team of the manufacturer's employees. Because wow. of this, it's technically a kit car or a component car in the U.S. It's street legal in all 50 states. This is crazy. Only 50 of them have been made. Whoa. It was tweaked and finalized. The design was tweaked and finalized through crowdsourcing. It's featured in several Forza games, so there's a chance that I've driven it in that. It's featured in Transformers Age of Extinction, and Letty drives one in one scene in one of the movies, and I won't say which one yet. So, okay, so the first thing is it kind of looks like a Batmobile. (laughs) Okay. Uh, It is, it's got a really long extended front hood. There are two round circular lights. Doesn't look like there are, I guess there's probably small fog lights underneath. Again, I guess because you can sort of modify the way it looks. I don't know if all of these look this way, but uh, okay. the the spacing between the tire and like the 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 the, the well, the tire well or whatever, yeah. is really uh, exaggerated. Like there's probably about a foot close to a foot there. Yeah, this thing is off the ground. Yeah, this okay. is like, yeah. Um, it only like the tires look like they're monster truck tires, but it's just like like the car kind of has a body, sort of like sort of ish, maybe like a Dodge Viper. Ooh. But the tires are like monster truck tires. So imagine that weird blend in your head. Oh, okay. it's silver, so that should be a hint. Yeah, that's a big help. Two doors. Okay. There's uh, the back. It's sort of an uh, unremarkable back, honestly. There's just a couple, or maybe the maybe because it's, uh, the picture is taken from farther away, I can't really see it. But the back, there's nothing really to write home about with the back. The front, it's kind of the whole package. Like, it's a very slim, low-profile car that just happens to be like elevated. It feels like about a foot and a half taller uh, than it should be. So strange. So and Letty it, drives one. In Fate of the Furious. I won't tell you which scene, but it's in Fate of the Furious. Um, so he's a model of manufacturer. It says, he says it's possibly no longer made by this manufacturer, but it sounds like, or seems like, the cars are still being produced. So maybe another, you know, manufacturer company. Is this manufacturer, is it like a name? Is, is it a manufacturer that I would know the name of? It sounds like something that you would just like, because you didn't have the rights to to say like Ford in your movie, you would have you would come up with something like this. This is an American motor vehicle manufacturing company focused on low volume manufacturing of open source motor vehicle designs using multiple micro factories founded in 2007 with headquarters in Phoenix, Arizona. In Phoenix. Yep. Interesting. Fuck. Who are these guys that make um, only 50 of them? Yeah. And you said it sounds like it's like almost a fake name. Uh, Mike, I, I sent you the thing, right? Like the the manufacturer. Mm-hmm. Like it doesn't sound, like it doesn't sound like it sort of feels like a. Oh, we, it sounds. It just you know kind of feels fake. It sounds like the name of a racing game. Yeah, <laughs> that's also it true. Does? Yeah, like like a like a, a a racing app kind of like with with in app purchases. <laughs> a racing app with in app. Like it purchases. sounds like a shitty racing game. I think. 
Yeah. I have no I th- I idea. I think Mike's right on, but yeah. The manufacturer, I, I don't know, I, I can't describe it anymore. Joe, okay. the manufacturer is Local Motors. Oh, and this okay. And the, the car is a rally fighter. Show me it. I've, I've never heard of these people. Like, that's oh, crazy. is this what she drives when she jumps out of the plane? No, this is the submarine scene that Letty drives it at the end of Fate of the Furious. That's so weird. But I just, you know, when I saw these, like, the... the yeah, in the, the back first of picture of the looks back like a with like, the concrete pillar and the, the cords going across, I was like, oh, that looks like the, the draft house South Lamar. Like, no, that's really cool. And it's cool that you go to build it with them. No, I have no idea what this is. I would never have figured this out. I, um, I do like that, you know, Wes is just like, uh, hey, good no, luck, good luck. No, I'm glad that we know what this is and we can know what it is in the movie next time. And now we know all this history about it. That's really fun. But yeah, I think it'd be cool to like, can you imagine that if you like went to go buy a car and you just like get to put it together somehow? It'd be really, really cool. Yeah, I think so. All right, Mike, you, you know what the, the next, the final game on this show is this Ain't No 10 Second Race, a.k.a. Oh God, yeah. Boy, do we have a podcast oh, that's for right. you. So now, Mike, you have, honestly, an unprecedented ability to really put yourself above everyone else in the leaderboard. Including us. Including us. So we have here, this is where we go on Twitter. We find any tweet that we think responding any to tweet. with, boy, do we have a podcast for you, hashtag Fast and Furious, hashtag 2F2F, hashtag the Fast and the Furious, whatever, link to our show page that people are going to be interested enough that they like, retweet, reply, or email us. So, last month, Joe, you went to Galactic Ninth. Yes. At Galactic Ninth backslash home, backslash Joel. He said, I recently watched through all the Fast and Furious series the transition from, hey, cool Turbo to, only you can stop Charlize Theron from nuking the entire world, is incredible. We said, boy, do we have a podcast for you? Joel did not respond, unfortunately. But he did not block you, so... He didn't block me. And didn't get his account suspended. Correct. Okay. All right. I then went to at the funny cater Uchi U C H E on Twitter. I watched Italian Job two days ago, and I swear it was exactly like a Fast and Furious movie, complete with Charlie Theron and Jason Statham. Boy, do we have a podcast for you? Nothing. Nothing. Okay. We had Kim Basinon from Bloomberg. Went at Stealth Oblivion L M Scooby. The new Fast and Furious film looks strange, and it was a close-up of the poster for the new Sonic the Hedgehog movie, where he's just kicking back with his shoes on, weird little Sonic body. Boy, do we have a podcast for you. Nothing. Damn. So once again, Joe, 0 for 3, but as we say every time, this ain't no 10-second race. No, we have not much time. Now, however, so before we go, I am inclined to let him do it, but when Austin sent in his car picture, he said... If you allow me the opportunity, I found a great tweet that I would love to play for the the Saint Louis Ten Second Race. So I, I would let him play, play it out. Yeah, that's so putting my here. Mind. He found at Samantha Alette on Twitter. Sam oh. says, "Help! I need suggestions. What are some of your favorite podcasts?" <laughs> so boy, do we have a podcast for you, Samantha? Yeah. So that's. I mean, it's so. I can't tell if that's a compliment from Austin or it's a really funny joke that that he wants us to tweet at someone asking what their favorite podcasts are. I think it's just the most likely to get a response. I think he's a smart gamer. He's he's gaming the system. You know what I mean? Maybe. So, uh, at Samantha Alette, uh, there we go. Has she been has she been replying to other things in that thread? Two people responded to her. I think she liked each of them. So, you know, we'll see. But okay, Austin Will Southern works. tweet there. Okay. I saw you responded already when I clicked it. That's funny. Okay, okay. I got mine. I got mine for Joe, today. put yours in the thread. Mine's coming in. And Hank it's B. Hank Hank Jr. Um, Hank B. 1993. He's replying to a tweet from the Paul Walker account from Paul Walker's real account, real Paul Walker, and he says that'll happen the day Toretto's Market and Cafe makes a decent tuna sandwich. And, oh, um, yes. And the original tweet was, "I thought if I got you in your good grace, I thought if I got in your good graces." You might let me keep my car. Brian O'Connor, hashtag the Fast and Furious, hashtag Team PW. Hank Jr., boy, do we have a podcast for you? I do feel like Hank is the kind of person who would listen to the show and appreciate the show. So ho- hopefully, Hank, yeah. you find us, Hank B. 1993. Now, Joe, uh, Mike, have you found a tweet that you want to play in this game? This is kind of tough. I think I found one, though. Okay. Hold on. Well, it's you not, get like eight tries to slap Mike, so you'll be doing pretty all good. Right. Let me copy the link. See, I mean, there's so many. If you just like all I'm 
did was just search Fast and Furious oh, dude. on Twitter. Just be just be careful because that's also like this red pill weird thing going on too. So mm-hmm. just okay. keep that in mind. Oh no, okay, no, I think I found a real okay, one good. here. What it, what this? I've never should I read it? Yeah, or go do for you it. it. At Debbie I've ne- Ryan. I've never seen any of these guys stop at a gas station. My fiance, our second time through the Fast and the Furious franchise. <laughs> so this is this is one of the definitely one of the, Mike's going the way of hitting somebody with a ton. This has thirty three hundred retweets, forty one thousand likes. Yeah, good. Yeah. Oh, I didn't. All right. Well, is that that's kind of good, right? I mean, we don't know. So, it could we've tried up, it. It worked. Not sure. It didn't. I didn't work. put that into account. Boy, do we have a podcast for you, Debbie Ryan, whoever you are. Because I mean, if they're going through it their second time, yeah, you know, they're gonna want to. Maybe check out lap two or something. So whoever she is, she has 10 million followers on Instagram. Who is this? She's an actress and singer. Uh, She's she's originally from Disney Channel. Oh, she plays the lead in Insatiable, that new Netflix series. And she was also in... I didn't check any of that out. I just went by... I believe you. I went by content of tweet. (laughs) If you you would have done the other way, we would have judged you. You can literally pick anything because we have no idea how this works. So Okay. It is... It's it's sort of... It's a third in 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 a trilogy of tweets... So I'm going to go through here. Okay, so the first tweet said, from at secondary underscore J, or I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to figure out which one of these I want to reply to, but it says, if Brian's Nissan Skyline doesn't mean anything to you, you're too young for me. Okay. And someone responded and said, Vince said, fuck that buster. And then someone, <laughs> and then secondary J responded, that is one of my favorite cars from that series. So I think my favorite tweet of the three is the first one. However, for the game, I think it makes more sense to do the second or the third because yep, then Taylor maybe. White is also going to get a notification too. You know what I mean? Maybe. Yeah. Although I got I got to go with my heart. I'm going to go with the first one. If Brian's D on Skyline doesn't mean anything to you, you're too young for me. Secondary J, boy, do we have a podcast? So yeah, I'm going with my heart as opposed to my head. Secondary J, Fire Marshal Trill. Hopefully, you uh, join us on this on this and this ride along lap. So, there we yeah. go. We have four tweets, including Austin's. Hopefully, 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 one of us will score some points. But you know, this ain't no 10 second race. We got nothing but time. Nothing but time. So, the last thing before we close up shop, I do want to mention we when we were recording every month Magic Mics and Boyfriend Material, we always did our last recording, next recording. Uh, this month is one of the months where those shows are back. So, if you're listening to this when it came out, we just released our episode of Smallfoot for Magic Mics, the Training Tatum podcast, if you want to go check that out. And then next week, in six days, we're releasing our episode of Boyfriend Material about First Man. So go check that out. And then we'll be back in two weeks for Too Fast, Too Furious, once again with Mikester here on the Ride Along Lap. Oh, yeah. Are you not doing the like the normal outro? Oh, no, I am. I just want to sort of, you know, take a breath. And, you know, I've been talking for a while. I want to sort of see if uh, do either of you have any here? last thoughts. No, I'm glad that Mike joined us finally. And I'm, I'm excited for the whole Ride Along Lap, for me at least. And this is, you know, I, I feel like, you know, we, I think our longest episode so far has been with Jordan on the Fast and Furious 6 episode. You know, considering the long intro section here, this is going to be another long one. I don't know if it's going to break that record, but we're going to be close. But I think sometime this lap... We're going to put out our longest episode of the yeah. series. Maybe it'll be the Tokyo Drift episode where we might have a special Who guest. Knows? Although that's already mm. going to be, in theory, hint, hint, a three-part crossover extravaganza. Ooh. So Ooh. Uh, think about that. But, you know, we're definitely going to talk about that movie for longer than any other movie here. I'm sure. Yeah, but I think that might be because we're talking about three fun. episodes. But uh, this is a long one. It's a great way to start off the ride-along lap. Come back in two weeks for episode two of lap three write in email family at cageclub.me just say hi let us know you're here we love listening to you you know we love that you write in we would be doing these just for our own fun but it's so cool so so cool that people out there care enough about these movies to to hear just two or three weirdos on the internet uh, talk to each other about them so uh, thank you all for listening for all things too fast too forever go to cageclub.me facebook.com slash cageclub at Cage Club Pod on Twitter and Instagram. Email us family at cageclub.me. You can check out our Patreon page on patreon.com slash too fast too forever. Check out our Facebook page at facebook.com slash too fast too forever. And then come back every two weeks for a new episode of the show. I'm Joey Lewandowski. I'm Joe too. Mike, I'm gonna let you do it. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna let you sign out this lap. Only you, because this is the ride along. And I'm Mike Manzi. There we go. And we'll see you in two <laughs> weeks for too fast. Too furious on too fast, too forever. Two. 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 Two.